Yo, 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 I'm back. You know what it is. It's your boy, World of Rama, Grand Heart TV podcast, me at S Street Media Studios. And you know what I'm saying? I got a special guest in here with me today. If y'all noticed the song that I played, the lead off the show, it's the, new, it's the lead single off the uh, Lucy the Movie soundtrack. It was produced and written, you know what I'm saying, by my guy GQ Beats. He's the one that's handling the whole soundtrack. And um, in the last couple scenes, well, throughout the movie, you're going to see a lot of gun activity and police wear and different things of that sort. And the person that handles all of that and get, puts all that together for a lot of different movie sets and different things like that. And they have a lot of stuff going on. We're going to get into everything today on Groundhog TV Podcast. We have the one, the only... James C.B. Gray, y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yo, look. <clears throat> Before I go into, you know what I'm saying, indulging in everything that he got going on, because I'm I'm amazed at everything that he's involved in and shit like that. I just want to say, don't forget to pick up your Groundhog gear. Uh, you see, I got the new jacket on right now. I got the jackets ready for y'all. We got the shirts. We got the hats. We got all that. We got this merch moving out here, and we want y'all to be, you know what I'm saying, support, buy it, wear it. And shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my distributor overseas. Shout out to my other guy that does embroidery for me out here in New York. And everywhere else I get any 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 anything done, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I want to get to my guests and I want to say, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for being here, my guy. Oh, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Definitely. Word up. So what do I call you? Do I call you James C.B. Gray? Do I just call you <laughs> James C.B.? Like, what do you go uh, by? You know what? A lot of people... Uh, Call me Cool Breeze because that's what the CB stands for. Oh, okay, Cool Breeze. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so James but, Cool Breeze. Yeah, before right. before I, before I got with Reverend Al Sharpton's organization and before I became uh, a politician, I was Cool Breeze. I was a film and television producer and promoter and everything. But I I did a, a rebranding mm. and you know just brought back my original name, but with the CB in the middle for those who knew me as Cool Breeze. Right, right, right. That's like on Facebook. My my, my name is uh, Craig Worldorama Bryant. Yeah, yeah. And I got a page for uh, for Worldorama as well, but I just want to let everybody know that, you know what I'm saying? I'm Worldorama, yeah. yeah so I understand yeah. what you're saying. And it was an artist named Cool Breeze back in the days. He had a you fire know, song, uh, too. Yeah, yeah, from our, he was with the Dungeon Family, yeah, yeah, uh, Good yeah. Mob and all that, yeah, mm. from Atlanta. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he Word. had a hit. So look, I want to get into first, you, you mentioned Al Sharpton. Yeah. And I just was looking at something online about Al Sharpton, you know what I mean? Because you know it's a whole political time. Yeah. It's actually, if y'all don't know, who, well, people that not watch this later, because we live on a lot of other platforms, but um, this is it's November 3rd, and um, November what, 5th is when we'll know who the next president is going to be yes. of the United States. If yeah. it's going to be Kamala, or if it's going to be Trump and shit like that, it's, it's like whoever y'all vote for, whoever y'all running for, man, let's just hope this country could get better. You know, they say make America great again or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like right now, how do you feel about the country right now? Well, uh, statistically and realistically, we are in a worse predicament now than we, than we were when Trump was in office. Yes. You honestly have to look at that. Okay. I'm glad you said that. Uh, a lot of people don't want to look at that and see there's also like the Jedi mind trick going on right now. Right. Where they're trying to make it they trying to make it look like Trump messed up everything in the last three and a half years, which actually he didn't. Right. All right. And listen, I'm a, I'm a Democrat. Okay. But I have some strong conservative views. 
you know, really So you're a conservative actually. You're not really just a well, Democrat. I, well, when I say that, strong conservative views, you know, I'm that that deals with uh, the family structure mm -hmm. that deals with, you know, the importance of understanding how um, that reflects on you as a person. Right. So when you talk about, you know, um, these trans people coming into the elementary school. Right. Doing those dances you know, and shit like that they, for they, little they're kids. Actually, they're actually paying these trans people to come into the kindergarten classroom and read books. To, those children need to see, that what they need more than that, they need to see positive black male role models. Right. That, that's really what Not men need. dressed up in drag, dancing yes. and going down and splitting. Because yes. I've seen some of the stuff online and they, they got little babies sitting around yeah. while these drag people is, is, is and drag means dude uh, something as a girl. Yeah, but the thing is this, those kids are not really listening to the books that are being read to them. They're really confused about why, you know, this woman sounds like daddy, you know, that confusion breeds even, uh, you know, more things. Now, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against the LGBT community at all. My thing, my whole thing with that is I just think that you're, they're targeting the children, and that's a very bad prospect. The, mo the most vulnerable time is early childhood, brain developmental process. But Isn't also, it like from one to five? Well, also, all, one also uh, in the mid-teens is another very, very vulnerable mm -hmm. point, too, because that's the time when these... Children, they 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 want to be accepted in the cool crowd. They want to be right. liked and everything. And they do. They go above and beyond a call to to be, you know, uh, involved and to be accepted. Right. And they're willing to do more things. So, you know, instead of telling the kid, okay, listen, you're going through a time when your hormones are going through the roof and everything. Right. That's why you're unstable. That's why things are you know going crazy. But you just relax and mm -hmm. try to deal with you know things the best you can. They'll say, oh, you're gay. And that's a false <laughs> diagnosis a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? And then once again, I'm, this is not an attack on anybody like that. Right. I just think that kids need to be kids, man. Right. And, I, you know, and it said that we should even have to stress this. But I'm like, listen, just let kids be kids. Let children be children. Let boys be boys and let girls be girls. When they get to a point in life where they decide that's what they want to do, then, then they, can, they can make their decision on right. that. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. You know? Well, I, this is my opinion on it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody always say, oh, they got nothing against gay people and all this yeah. and that. And yeah, yeah. It, it, theoretically, I don't either. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're trying to turn my son to be gay by constantly pushing your agenda on him, then I do have something against it. Because it seems like now with the gay community, they want everybody to walk on eggshells to appease them, yeah, to make yeah, them feel yeah. equal and everything like that. But yet... I'm not gonna dumb down my masculinity for you to feel important. See, like, that's it, right? That, you, that's a big part of it, right? Yeah. Like, we're going through a, a real serious uh, agenda of emasculation, especially the black men. Right. Okay. That's a whole nother conversation. Yo, I'm saying this. <laughs> well, before we you know, remember, we here for two hours, so before yeah, we get yeah, into yeah, yeah, yeah. everything that's going on with you, yeah, yeah we yeah. talking about yeah. you know the election yeah. and everything because that's the shit that's going yeah. on right and now. I, I, I could talk about anything, right? And no, you know, what I'm saying I don't want to get you in no, yeah. no trouble with no, none no, of no, your, no, your no. congregation or your people no, no, and all no, like listen, that. I'm, like I said, you I'm, a fly guy too, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I might say, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, man. Word up. Listen, I know, I know, I could talk about anything because I, you know, even in the proper, like I said, I'm a Democrat. But there are some things that I don't agree with that the Democrat Democratic Party, you know, endorses. You know? I think we all being raised as black middle class people in America, mm -hmm. we were all pushed to be Democrats. Yes. But yeah. in all actuality, the Democratic Party was the party, which both parties were, yeah. but the Democratic Party was really the party that didn't want to end slavery. Exactly. They wanted to keep that free labor going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why Abraham Lincoln was 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 bodied yeah. in that theater like that, in that in that fashion. They wanted to do that in a public forum fashion because he was trying to jam up the, the, the deep south by trying to like say, oh, let's free the slaves so he could jam up their economic yeah, advances yeah. because they make it so much money that off of these slaves. Like yeah. our peoples, this country was built off of our ancestors' backs. Literally. And th this is what a lot of people is not understanding with why so many people have problems with them letting 10 million migrants in 
with no type of documentation and giving them money. They're not even coming here just to try to work hard to try to get an opportunity. They're giving them everything. When black slaves, they were never given their 40 acres and a mule. Yeah. They were never given a handout. You know what they were given? They were given welfare mm -hmm. to break up the family so they can stay under the fucking thumb of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The white people in America. That's and it's true. a fact. That's a fact. There's all there's so many uh, statistics and, and evidence out there of it. You know what I mean? Even I remember even when we were younger, when I lived in the hood with my moms and we couldn't have, like her boyfriends couldn't stay at the crib. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know my pops. That's another thing right there. Like the way crack came into the system and a whole bunch of shit happened. Either way, I don't know my pops, but I remember back in the days throughout the, all of the projects when there was white flight and white people were moving to Long Island and upstate Westchester and different places yeah. and they was letting black people move into the projects and stuff like that. They were giving the women of the families the apartments and welfare and saying, as long as you don't have a man in the house, mm -hmm. you can keep this apartment and we'll help assist in paying your rent. Yeah. But you yeah. can't have a man there. So now where the fuck is all these men going to go? Now, you know what? Somebody, uh, people's asking me that question too. A lot of those men were like, you know what? I'm glad y'all like y'all got a place to stay. I'll yep. be, I'll be cool. You know what I'm saying? And a lot mm -hmm. of these brothers went into stages of depression, right? Because they wasn't able to support their family. They, it was embarrassed. A lot of them. They were now no longer the heads of their household. Yes, a lot of them. A lot of these brothers ended up being strung out on heroin, getting caught up in crime, getting caught up in a whole Rockefeller drug laws and yep. all of these things. You that know? that that um, uh, Biden wrote. Yeah, the, oh, the, the, the bill that bill. Biden built, the crime yeah. bill that Biden wrote was to send all of those black men to jail for long periods of time mm -hmm. dealing with drugs. And some of them wasn't drug dealers. They were drug abusers because they didn't have nowhere to go. And they was outside doing drugs and they had to do whatever little scams they had to do to get by while their woman with the kids were given that apartment to live in that they couldn't be at. So they had to be out in the street finding a way. Some of them felt susceptible to being drug addicts or things of that sort. Some of them got caught with a little bag of little dope or, or, or crack or whatever, and they went to jail for long periods of time because of Biden's crime bill mm -hmm. that it was under Bill, uh, Bill Clinton and all of that. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't even understand. So we run around with this whole Democrat, Democrat, Democrat shit, but the Democrats were the main party that was to take the black community down. And I don't understand it. Like, it's weird to me. You know what I mean? But it is what it is, but... You know, I don't want to get too political and everything yeah. like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We got James C.B. Gray in the building, y'all. You know what I'm saying? If y'all want to talk to him, y'all can call up 516-540-1684. We in S Street Media Studios right now. We talking about a lot of different things. Now, I want to also get into, like, let everybody know what it is that you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, you know what I'm saying? Get down yeah, to it. Yeah. Like, let them but know. Because you know I met you at the, on the Lucy the Movie soundtrack, yeah. and you supplied all of the, the guns and the police props and everything yeah, for, the, yeah. for the set. So what is it that all you right. do? So let me tell you. When people ask that question, and now I could run down a whole list of things that I do. Right. And you can see on my... Uh, Instagram. On my uh, which, um, LinkedIn page. Right, LinkedIn. My resume is like eight pages long. Right. You know, so I can... <laughs> Even if I wanted to, to I, I have to chop it down. The more effective approach for that question is a lot of times, like specifically talking about music, then I'll say, oh, if, if we're talking about music, yeah, I used to be an A&R, I used to be an executive in the music industry. Right. You know, uh, Russell Simmons Music Group, Warner Brothers, Sony, you know, we work, work under um, Kurt Lightburn and Mark Pitts up at Sony for years, you know, but... Uh, and I started off as a professional drummer. You know, mm. played with a, a, a lot of major artists, did a lot of live studio percussion on a couple of tours. And But playing drums for artists helped me to network my way into the business side. Right. Which, which you know, eventually I became an executive and, and started really working in music behind the scenes and working with artists and helping them get deals and structure situations and things like that. Then after that, that opened doors for what I did in television and film. Right. You know what I'm saying? So basically, I've held a executive position in every level of the industry, film, fashion, music, and television, which then gave me the platform to create a, co a company where I became an industry executive consultant. Mm. You know, so I, I can give you advice on how to succeed in every <sighs> level of the industry as an industry executive consultant. Right. You know, and that's just one side of it. You know, professional actor, screen actors guild for twenty five years. Yeah, I'm looking at your I'm looking <laughs> at your 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 link tree right now and it's saying 
everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're on oh, yeah, Twitter, yeah. you're on IMDb, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Your LinkedIn page, Facebook, you know what I'm saying? Your Instagram, all that. Oh, you know what okay. I mean? Okay. Good? Yeah. yeah. And then to say the hip hop uh fraternity CEO. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I seen that when I posted the <laughs> clip, the advertisement of you being here, yeah. you you practically broke that down. But like like let everybody know again, like what's that all about? Okay, so yeah, the hip hop fraternity is uh First of all, it's a think tank. Okay. And there's not many times where you're going to have the word think involved with a black institutional organization right. or company. So this is the one of the things that we always try to influence members of the hip hop fraternity and anybody in general. Right. Is to think. You know, just for instance, before you pull that trigger, you, you might want to think about if you want to do 25 years in prison. Correct. That's a very serious decision you're gonna to have to make based on the consequences of your actions. Right. So even in our case with Hip Hop Fraternity, we gather information and we also create the think tank structure which gives people the opportunity not only to think about where we're going with this but to be objective and involved with our agenda moving forward. So the Hip Hop Fraternity is also a sorority as well. Mm, for women so as we well. have males and females. So okay. A lot of times, we just, you, we, we, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of feminists. Mm. Oh, wait, why is there, there ain't no females? I said, hold, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's always like that. The word fraternity, we used just to symbolize camaraderie and brotherhood. Right. And sisterhood. So it's not like, oh, this is only a male thing. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of females that hold leadership positions mm. in the hip hop fraternity. Our, our National vice president, uh, Mallory, she's down in Atlanta and she's a female. She's been one of our founding members, very diligent, very progressive. And now I got a question for you. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you, you know what I'm saying? You, it would be okay if you answer this, if you know it or not. But yeah, yeah. Is, is she a straight female or is she? Yeah, she's straight. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, sometimes we have a lot of people that's representing the females and yeah. they're really not, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Not to say that a lesbian female is not really a female, but sometimes the the the, the butch women in the community <laughs> they be having different views. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Views and agendas. Yes, I've seen that a lot too. You know what I'm saying? That's what um, that whole uh, black Black Lives Matter movement with the, oh, with the lesbian God. ladies that started that and Yo, everything like that. That so, was a whole situation. Yeah. Like it went literally went from <laughs> the nuclear black black family to now trans and, and LGBT. Right. All of that was it eighty million dollars was chopped up. Some of it went to Biden's campaign. Right. Some of it, the rest of it went to LGB and trans organizations. Yep. How did all that happen when the base of this whole, the basis yep. of the whole objection was a black man being killed being by killed some by white police. cops? So how, how the hell is his family about to get evicted from a house right now exactly. and $80 million was raised? Yep. But a lot of them put that money in their pocket. And a lot of that, I'm pretty sure a lot of that money from that Black Lives Matter organization, yeah. which was funneled into the, the LGBTQ community. George, I, oh, George Soros was involved with that too. Mm -hmm. And the whole Antifa thing. All And see, that's why when they mentioned black, I said, like, don't mention that main to me at whatsoever yeah. because they have still not answered crucial questions. How the hell are they going around buying mansions yeah. and throwing all these LGBT high profile parties, yeah. but the family and the objection of this whole situation is in is, is being about to be evicted, don't have no money. And, and and for instance, George Floyd was killed wrongfully by this cop and them motherfuckers went to jail. So why hasn't his family been paid already? Yo. That, that's weird to me. Like yeah. where the money at the, that they are supposed to go to them? And all this Black Lives Matter money that was raised, yeah. why isn't a big portion of that going to George Floyd's family? Exactly. That's what I don't understand. And it's like, like I was about to say, I'm sure a lot of that money was paid to a lot of these different schools and stuff like that to coerce them, to let them have these drag people go to schools and be doing all that fucking gay dance and shit for these kids. Yeah. These is little babies. Why would you want to do the drag queen dances for the kids? The shit that I'll be seeing online, like why? What, what, what part of education is that? You just trying to educate them that these is men that can dress like women and dance like this and split and all of that with heels and makeup on and it's okay? Why y'all trying to make the kids realize that this is so okay at a young age? It's an agenda here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they want us men to dumb down our masculinity. That's kind of one of the reasons why I feel like they had Barack Obama campaigning so hard for Kamala and speaking to the black men. Because it's oh, so backwards yeah. about on. the shit. That was real disrespectful. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead, speak on it, brother. Extremely disrespectful on Barack Obama's behalf. I'm going to tell you why. 
He never singled out Asians. Nope. Whites, Jewish, nobody else except black men. Yep. Not only, see, he never even addressed the fact that black men might have an issue. Mm -hmm. He came down on them. Yep. Un, uh, uh, you know, unwarranted and trying to scold them. And it's equivalent to the same thing Biden doing. Biden came on to the Breakfast Club. He said, yo, if you don't you vote for me, me, you're not you black. black. I don't know how the hell nobody, <laughs> you see, even Charlemagne could have really hit that heads on. But he didn't. Yeah, you, you know, notice well, that? Because Charlemagne yeah. is always a person that's addressing no. it and coming at somebody yeah. with something. But he let that he shit fly. He let that slide. And he I mean, was like, wow, you know, this is this is crazy. But what Obama did now, Obama also went over to Africa and was trying to give them a lot, these African countries, a lot of money. But they had to sign off on this agenda, too, because they he seen that. Now, nah, but I, I, I heard that the black leaders over there in Africa, they was like, nah, get the fuck yeah, out of here with yeah. that. They, they wasn't yeah. with that. They was like, nah, you're not going to push this gay shit over here with us. We not yeah. we not we not jacking that. We ain't jacking that at all. And Kamala Harris was in her, in her, her same mouth. She mm -hmm. said, oh, I'm not going to do anything for black people specifically. OK, but yet you're doing now, stuff now, for everybody else. I posted that on my page. Right. Mm -hmm. And like I, I'm a Democrat and a lot of people that know that I'm a Democrat, they, they, they say, yo, man, hi. And, I, and my thing is, it's not even about me, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's about you looking at what she just said. Like, she clearly said, I'm not going to do anything specifically for black people. And, and I, had, I posted the video where Dr. Umar Johnson came right behind her yep. and said, now, you heard what she said out of her own mouth. Correct. I'm not going to do anything specifically for black people. And he pinpointed how she specifically, her and uh, President Biden specifically did something for LGBT Correct. community. They specifically did something for the for the uh, Jewish community. Yep. They specifically did something for the migrants. And they specifically did something for the Asians. Yep. And what they did for the Asians is crazy because a, a, a year and a half of backlash over this COVID thing, and they were able to get a protected class Agree, understanding which protected them. How many? How long have black people been getting killed by cops and everybody Forever. else? Forever. And we since still, police was started. And we're still not a protected class of people. Yep. But she's not going to do anything specifically <laughs> you know, for black people. But everybody want to pass off the fact that she's the black woman that's running and all man, that. Listen. But yet, I work with a lot of Indians in my, in my job, and they don't identify as black. So her mom's is a straight Indian type of Bangladeshian type of woman. They do not identify as black. Yeah. I work with a lot of Guyanese people. Yeah. And I mean the Indian ones. And I speak to them every day. I've been on my job for 18 years. Yeah. They do not identify as black. They identify as Indian. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how dark skin they are. They do not say that they are black. And I know Kamala was raised the same way. That's yeah. it. That's a fact. No, no, but yet, you, there's a group of Indians in India called the Gravidians. And these okay. are like the darkest ones. They, they, they treat these people so damn bad. We don't need, we, we rarely even hear about them because they never let them be seen on, on camera unless they're going into the slums. Right. Like you'll never see one of these guys representing India. These guys are black, darker than us. Yep. They go, they're called the Gravidians. And these people, they call the untouchables. Mm. Google that. Indian Dravidians, untouchables. They call them the untouchables because nobody want to deal with them. No, they don't even accept these people. This is in India. So just imagine. And, and I'm going to tell you, you ever seen Indian people writing tickets? Yeah, they all run that shit. You know why they, they run that you, shit. You know why they run that? Because they, yo, those, those guys, they don't care who, they'll write their mother ticket. Yep. They don't care. Like, unless, <laughs> unless you run down on them, you know, if they if they going up to your car and you run down on them yeah. and stop them, then they but don't want no confrontation. They have they, a, no they, confrontation. they have a history of being racist to amongst themselves, yep, let alone yep. anybody. You else. said Gravidians. Yeah, yeah. Gravidians. The, the, uh, yeah, the caste system. They call the Untouchables. All right. So let me see. It's a G G R. What, Untouchables? Oh, oh, I thought you were typing. I was at, I'm sorry, yeah. Gravidian. Untouchables, and yeah, right there, India. Uh -huh. Untouchables, India. Right okay, there. boom. All right, all right. So look, this is the term for the Untouchables in India is Dalit, a term that the community has chosen for itself. The word Dalit comes from the Sanskrit word Dalita, which means divid, divided, split, broken, scattered. In the 19th century, the word was used to describe people who were not 
of the four varnas in the Hindu castle system. Caste, yeah. So the caste system was a, 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 a it's kind of like a segregation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they would single out the darks, the lights. Right. If you look at Bollywood, you can clearly see yeah. the, the, how the caste system works. Because there's, there's a certain, like, these untouchables, you'll never see them on TV. Right. Unless they go into the slums with these cameras. Mm. And see, that's a whole nother racial system in, internally in India that, you know, they're dealing with. So, once again, let alone outside of that, when they're dealing with black people, we're just as bad as those untouchables to them. Right. And they don't even want to talk about it, especially not in this whole election, because it, it reflects bad. Look, they showed a picture. They said, oh, you know, Kamala Harris... She worked at McDonald's when she was um, in college. They just found out that that picture was photoshopped. See, you know, and that's very that's very unforthcoming. And even her grandmother, you know the black grandmother oh, yeah, that she, she was standing with, she wasn't even alive when that when her yeah, grandmother was. Yeah, she told a lie about that. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. so now she didn't came clean off she the shit. She had to though because they 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 exposing it. You know who? You know who? Candace um, Owens, Candace Owens playing, blowing boy. her up. Yo, I love her. She blowing. Yo, people was dissing Candace Owens, I but love, yo, I she is Candace. the truth, bro. Like everything she's saying be facts. They don't like a per. The, yo, the truth always turns a person as like a the the bad guy. Yeah, the truth hurts everybody. Because Candace Owens, yo, Candace Owens, if you ever watch my show, <laughs> I, I love you, yeah. and I love what you' doing for the people and the truth. It's not even just about for black people. You are speaking the truth. The people need to know the truth. Yeah. And that's just what it is. That, you man. know what? That's one thing that I'm about. The truth. Some, some people might not like what I'm saying, but everything I'm saying is rooted in facts and it's the truth. And we can't, if you got somebody that can't deal with the truth, that's a whole nother situation on them. Right. They, you know, you're going to have to be able to deal with truth in order to understand and grow as a person, mm -hmm. you know, especially when it comes to your character. Right. And, and when we talk about accountability, you to at least to thyself be truthful. You see, you see what I'm saying? Right. That's so important, and it really reflects on the level of people's character and understanding when it comes to accountability. So, I'm always encouraging people deal with things in a realistic form because guess what? If we don't deal with these issues right now, we're gonna be dealing with them for the next four years on a whole nother level. I can tell you right now, from what I've been doing my little research on and everything like that, mm -hmm. if Kamala Harris wins. We're screwed. See, everybody's saying that they're worried about Trump winning because it's going to give white people more power to do wild shit. But, yo, white people already been feeling like they're superior in this yeah. country already. But <laughs> for Kamala to get in and for other countries to look at us as weak, yeah. that's, a, that's a whole nother ball game. You know. That's a whole nother ball game. This, this would mean that all of the migrants and the, and the people, the foreigners that been here, that's already embedded and in deep in America's uh, system already, they can now really start infiltrating because they know that they don't look at women as a, a source of power. Yeah, They don't. Some countries look at women as... Second class. Exactly. Like, you know, literally. So now check this out. If you look at some of these things that have really developed in the, in the, in the, during the course of this time, right? when you got... Um, remember when the, when, the, when, the, when the migrants started coming over here? Right. They said that it was three, four different levels, classes of people that didn't have to take the vaccine. Migrants were one of them. Right. Uh, the other one was uh, Chinese students. Uh, then a, a lot of the Jews were getting over with these um, uh, was it religious exemption and right. things like that. Yep, yep. But because no Jews was forced to wear masks. Yeah. I remember riding <laughs> around because I was I'm an essential worker. Yeah. So I yeah. never was had to. Um, I never had to like uh, stay in my house and nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So I would ride around in certain areas. And when I would go through Williamsburg, Jews still had their schools open. They had their shit was flourishing. All of their stores was open. It was like regular time. So when I would go to the black community and I would see cops coming around, um, forcing people to put on masks and pulling over everybody like, yo, where's your mask? Where's your mask? So I asked a cop one day. I was in East New York. Cop came over and they was like, well, look, we, we don't want to cause any problem with what y'all doing over here, but we don't see nobody with mask on. I said, you know what, officer? <laughs> it's so strange because I just drove through Williamsburg yesterday mm -hmm. and I seen Jews and their kids running around freely like it was normal, regular day when everybody else is shut down. And y'all, I didn't see no cops saying anything to the Jews about their whole neighborhood being running free like as if there wasn't even no type of COVID going on. They, you know, they was having weddings. Yes. When they were supposed to be uh, uh, quarantined. Quarantine. I showed a picture of Harlem, 
a park that had the gate on around the um the, uh, uh, a chain around the gates. Yep. Then I showed a picture of downtown, um, in in uh, was it off the West Side Highway? I right. The name of that park. But yo, it looked like a summer day with all these people out. And I said, wow, look at the double standard here. Yep. See, that's some of the things that we got to look at. The double standard all across the board. All right. When we got these people coming in here, we they did a whole survey on how there was a request in black neighborhood, black neighborhoods to find money to renovate these schools so they can open up new charter schools. It's, new York City said, yo, we don't have the budget. We can't do it. Six months later. They found some money to to turn those vacant schools into places that these immigrants can yep, live in. Yep, because some schools now are now like shelters. Yeah, now. and look at the if you look at the uh, the hotels, the schools, they're even telling people, yo, if you have an extra room in your house, yep, we'll give you some finances so to to put some migrants in there. Where is the same energy with that initiative? To change the circumstances of black and brown people that have been in line it's not, for years. That's one thing no I, that I that's us. one thing that I don't agree with. And I think that we need to be more vocal about. One thing I like about Chicago, they're having these conversations yes. in city council. They're having these conversations, you know, uh, at the Capitol. And they're really vocal about it. And guess what? Things are starting to change. But if we don't have a national referendum invoking the same thing, because guess what? Every the every nationality Every demographic of people that comes to Kamala, well, matter of fact, other way around. When Kamala comes to the Jewish community, when Kamala comes to the LGBT community, you know what happens? They she got, laughs. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> what happens is they got bags full of money. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, we got some money for you. We got your votes, but this is what we need first. We need your commitment that you're going to do this, this, and that for us. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know what? You got my commitment because she want that money. Right now, the African American demographic. Okay, look, I need y'all to step to the side while the LGBT and the Jews, we talk about the money that they got yeah. for me. See, and guess what? Y'all don't worry. Y'all gonna get the scraps. Y'all gonna get the leftovers. And guess what? A lot of times that's what happens. So I said the only way that we can overcome this this kind of situation that's been going on for the last fifty years, right, is we have to come to the table with money, power, and respect. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, this is the reason why I'm launching the Hip Hop Fraternity Political Action Committee. Okay. This right here is going to help us to have a seat at the table, a voice, and it's also going to help us be uh, have a stake in the referendum and the resources, okay? So you can't get our, our vote, you can't get our money until we can have, have an agreement, an understanding right. on what you can do for us, a guarantee. Right, because okay. the hip hop community is so influential, and look, we can do if, a lot. If you look at what I said on the Breakfast Club, I talked about how the hip hop voting block has potential to be the strongest voting block in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's just not centralized and it's not organized enough for, to work for us. Mm. You know why? They'll take Jay Z, they'll take Beyonce, they'll take Nas, Cardi B, they'll take Cardi B, they'll take Sexy Red, and they'll say, "Yo, look, we need y'all to tap dance for this political event." Yeah, but they never asked them. What are your views on politics? How do you feel about this? You know yeah. why? Because they can't take a chance of one of those artists speaking collectively as a person for the people. Right. You see what I'm saying? They don't want to know what, what you think. They just want you to tap dance and perform for the blacks. I just seen Cardi B doing her little speech oh. about Kamala Harris. <sighs> and it seemed like more, it seemed like more if she just was on some women power shit. No, 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 no. Listen, check this out. I'm gonna show I'm gonna send you a video. Mm -hmm. If you look in, but when right before Cardi B started speaking, right, she realized that the teleprompter was broken. Mm. So she went to. Her so phone. she tried to act like, okay, I'm scared, I'm nervous. No, she wasn't nervous at all. The prompt teleprompter wasn't working properly for her to say what she had to say. Mm -hmm. So now what she did was she started, hey, how y'all doing today? To try yep. to buy some time, and guess what? The lady came and handed her a cell phone. Yep. But she read the prepared statement, the prepared script. Off of the cell phone. Mm. Okay? If you look at it again, you'll see what I'm saying. Okay. Not because I've seen her read it off the phone. That was, if that came from her heart, she wouldn't need no teleprompter or no cell phone. Right. She had to really reach down. She had to talk about what they wrote in there was, oh, the immigrant thing. And, and that's for us to, 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 to accept right. what's going on right now more. Mm -hmm. All right? There's nothing worse 
then us being in a situation where we have no resources available, we're being overlooked and stepped over. All right. They, they, no, listen, they right now in the process of trying to get these immigrants. What country can you go to and say, I'm not a citizen, but I want to vote? Yep. They say, man, are you damn crazy? You haven't paid no taxes in this country and you're trying to come here trying to vote? They'll look at you. They'll say, you know what? Get him out of here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand how this works. But guess what? America is one of those places now where you're going to be able to do that. And now, once again, I'm not trying to take nothing away from nobody. But if we don't stand for anything, if we allow us ourselves to be railroaded, there's resources that we are directly entitled to. How come Kamala can't talk about reparations right now? That's a major factor too. Yeah, because okay? why? Why is everybody else getting money and getting? Why? How come migrants come here and they all getting? That's reparations. They coming here and they getting money. They getting like. Thousand, three thousand dollars on these cards. They're getting thousands of dollars Yo. in food stamps. They living in these luxurious hotels. Even if it ain't luxurious, they still don't gotta pay nothing. That is reparations for the people that built this country. What? I'm sorry, man. Like you know, what I'm saying my ancestors built this country. Like a lot of this stuff was built off the blacks of our ancestors, and we still are treated like we're not even human. You feel me? And it's, how could you let other people come here and you give them everything? Like, let alone the veterans that was went, that fought in wars for this country. Look, I'm a veteran, okay? There you go. So, I don't, and I, and I, what, I, what I really try to not to do, I try not to get emotional. But guess what? I trace my family history back to slavery. Mm. My great-great-great-grandfather was a slave. Of course. See what I'm saying? All of ours were. He was on a roll of original slaves who are entitled to reparations, which means that if it came down to it, I would still, I would get that. Right. But I'm not doing this for that. But what I am doing is is, is raising the issue because the Jews got reparations. Everybody the Indians got, got reparations. There's the, the, the Japanese got reparations. I got a whole long list of people that got reparations from the United States. And even the Venezuelans you know coming saying? here, they're getting reparations. You know, because if you notice, it's not just Venezuelans. It's mainly Venezuelans, but it's a lot of Africans, too, that came in from Africa that came through the, uh, Mexico as well to come here. Because oh, it, it's not just Venezuelans I see standing outside of a Home Depot and all that. It's a lot of Africans. But I noticed the African guys that's out there, they're not getting pulled in to do a lot of work like the, the, the Venezuelans in the Mexico. They're not getting a lot of resources either. Okay? Yeah. Look, look what happened right before this whole migration happened. The, the whole Asian, Haitian thing that went down. Yep, they sent them back. They was on horses with whips. Nobody want to talk about that. I got the pictures, mm -hmm. okay? And they treated those Haitians totally different from the Spanish, yep. okay, the Mexicans. The, and now look at El, the, um, El Salvador. They emptied out two prisons in El Salvador. And sent them here. They, and they gave them an ultimatum. Either go to the United States or you stay in prison. Those, both of those prisons are empty. Yep. Now, they don't even have like a a, 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 a prison system yeah, problem yeah. because all of their criminals are here. But guess what? If I was a registered sex offender, thank God I'm not, I would be mad as hell. You know why? There's over 5,000 sex offenders from those countries yes. who are walking around here Regular. in the United States that are unregistered. They're going to they're gonna start you know doing shit. That is? They're doing shit now, matter of fact. You know, and once again, this is not a witch hunt. We're just bringing the, t the facts to the table. Yeah, the truth. Okay? And the truth going to hurt some people. And if we, can't, if we can't deal with the facts, if we can't deal with the truth, then who, who are we really and what do we stand for? You know, and I'm saying this to you because I am a Democrat who's mad about a lot of things that are not being done. Probably. He's a Democrat that's mad at the Democrats. <laughs> How about you know, that? And, I, you know, it's, I could have said, yo, forget that. I'm a Republican. But, like, no, I, I'm still a Democrat. But what I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to. I think we're out. Democrats just because we're black middle class people in America. They, yeah, because they, you know. they jumble everybody that's black and middle class as Democrats, because that's what we were all brainwashed to believe that we are. But in all actuality, before the Democratic Party was started, everyone was a Republican. Yeah, you and, know what I'm saying. Well, you know what, the the Republicans, uh, once again, freed the slaves. Once again, were the. Um, they they were and they were the progressive you know uh, party a long time ago and then it, it then they kind of flipped at a certain point because yeah, once it was time to start letting the slaves go free 
the the, the Democratic Party was started to be go against it. Yeah, and this is yeah, how the police yeah. uh, the police was formed. The slave catchers. And, yep, that's yeah, what they were. Yeah, police yeah. was actually the slave catchers. That's, that's what they, they were. Started. And this is why laws like. No loitering, no soliciting, no indecent exposure, no shit like that. Because they knew that these slaves were now free after years of being, and generations, generations of being oh, slaves. Oh, 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 oh. But look, now, there was a crucial time in between all that that a lot of people don't really highlight, right? Once slavery ended, now you have all of these black people who are now free people. With nowhere to go. But guess what? They had all the skills. Because mm. a white man didn't know how to do nothing but keep slaves. Right. All yeah. the bricklayers, all the carpenters, all they were all black. Right. So now you have a major push to teach white people how to do all this stuff. Mm. And you know what they did? They rounded up a whole bunch of ex-slaves who are now free to teach them how to do these trades. And then immediately the workers' unions were created. Mm. Specifically to keep the blacks from working and unionize and organize the whites. After we had to teach them motherfuckers how to do exactly. Shit. And that's what I always was saying. Like, how could how, how could white people have looked at black slaves as less than when <laughs> black slaves were the ones doing everything? everything. They were raising their kids. Yeah. They were feeding them. Yo, they was bre even some ladies were breastfeeding breast children. Feeding, and I don't yo. understand how the fuck a black slave would have breast milk and it's not even their kid. But they was <laughs> they were breeding these slaves so much that black mothers like they call them aunt your mamas back then. Yeah, yeah. The aunt your mamas had breast milk because they were always having babies. Even they was what they were doing. They was breeding slaves to make babies for gator bait. Yeah, literally. Like <laughs> literally giving, yeah, yeah. like making gators come out the swamp with babies there so they can kill them and sometimes just throwing the babies to the gators. We were treated so horrific. Yeah. So horrific. It was bad. And it's like, I feel like a lot of people should be just happy that we just want equality and we want our 40 acres and a mule as opposed to us wanting revenge. That, that, now that's like, what they was really scared of for a long time yeah. is that we were going to raise up and seek revenge. Now, if you ever look at, because I'm also an African American historian too. I don't right. know if, if you looked at my page. Every single day, I post a Black History fact of the day. Mm. Okay, and I've been doing that for 13 years, every 365 days a year. Wow. So I have a 365 day campaign of Black history. You know why? Because a Black child that knows his history has a heightened self esteem level, and that self esteem level gives them a sense of pride. And when a black child has a sense of pride, it's less, they're less likely to be a pregnant teen, a dropout, and end up in the criminal justice system. All these things are now a lesser possibility because this black child takes pride in who they are mm -hmm. and the people that came before them. Now, that pride factor factors into the family structure as well. So mm -hmm. that's a major component is the family structure. Right. But I'm teaching black history online because that's where the children are. That's right. what the teens are. That's what the youth are. So many people hit me up every day like, oh, my God, my kids love your black history facts because it gives them a sense of pride when they know that somebody black created this. Right. Somebody black did that. And that, it's everything. Yeah, we literally created everything. And you know why? If you look at uh, the, the patent system, right? Right. Back in the days, in order to have a patent, you had to register it through the, uh, the patent company. Right. right? Did you know how many white people stole yes. their slaves' patents? Yep. But what you really got to look at is this. Black, white people were not interested in making things easier for, for slaves. No, they were not. They didn't even <laughs> want, like, even though they knew, like, let's say, all right, let's uh, theoretically speak, um, Jim Bob, right, a slave owner. Yeah. And then he got uh, uh, Kunta or whatever mm -hmm. as, the, as his slave, right? Now... Him and Kunta got a really good relationship because Kunta's doing everything for him. Oh, yeah, everything. He's doing everything for him. Mm -hmm. But then when he realizes that Kunta has that type of skill and that know-how to make his family money, mm -hmm. he feels like since he owns Kunta, that that is not Kunta's no more. So if Kunta figured out how to make something to better his tractor yeah. or anything like that, now that's his invention. Exactly. So he's going to go and patent that and put mm -hmm. it under. So just think about... How many inventions was made that Johnson and Johnson had had patented? Now they're still getting money off of, of all Royalties, these generations. All that, yeah, and, everything. And so now look, if you look at today's Black History facts, on this day, November third, in the year eighteen sixty eight, John Willis uh, Maynard was yep, elected to Congress in Louisiana Second District. Maynard's election election victory over a white candidate was boycotted by whites, and he was never seated. 
So this black man won the election in 1868, mm-hmm. right after slavery ended. Yep. And they not only didn't acknowledge him, they didn't see him. So it's like it never happened. Yep. So just imagine that happening today. You know what I'm saying? Good this shit. black man, he show he proved them demo, you know, uh, in a real process of election that he could win. They acknowledged, okay, he won. So what? We ain't even got to set him. We don't have to, have to honor this. You see what I'm saying? That's Yo. just a level of disrespect that was going on. That's today's Black History fact. Chronologically, I do this every single day. Right. You know, and you'll see if you go to my uh, Instagrams, uh, Facebook, um, Twitter. You got a lot of stuff on there. James C B Gray. All across the board, you'll see a, a little known Black History fact every single day. Y'all can follow him on Instagram, James C B Gray. That's what an A. Yeah, G R A Y. G R A Y. You know what I'm saying? And he's right here. I'm, I'm going through his page right now, looking at it. Every and single day. And there's a lot day. of stuff on there, man. You know what I'm saying? So oh, a yeah, lot that, of stuff look, on. That's, that's that's on a Halloween. Um, this one? Oh, okay. This one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. You know, Black Panthers. Now, huh? I, that's my Halloween costume every year because my father was a real Black Panther in oh, real okay. life. So you know exactly who Sonny Carson is then. Yeah, listen, the, the education of Sonny Carson, we was fighting to get the street named after him, but they, mm. they said no because he was a felon and all this stuff. But That's bullshit. You know. So look at all of the felons they named blocks after now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Sonny Carson. If y'all don't know Sonny Carson, it was a guy who came up with the slogan, no justice, no peace. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was definitely affiliated. And that's Reverend Sharpton's slogan now. <laughs> yeah, but they got you it know. from Sonny Carson. But look, the crazy part is, so the education of Sonny Carson was a very crucial movie because mm-hmm. there was a guy named Eric Monte mm-hmm. that saw that movie, and he was with a Jewish producer. I forgot his name. And this Jewish producer said, "See, that's black culture. That's black. That's the black community." And he said, "Well, you know what? That's one element of it. That's one view of it. Right? Because that's New York City." He said, "I'm from Chicago. I'm from Cabrini Green Projects." Mm. And I, I heard of that. I could show. Oh, that was the most notorious project right. in, in Chicago. And Eric Monte said, I, I can show you an amazing story of black community from where I came from as mm-hmm. a child. So Eric Monte took this, you know, producer and he, he took him to a studio. He wrote out like his whole life story. Mm-hmm. That life story became the movie Cooley High. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, yeah. check this out. In the movie Cooley High, there's a dude named Preach. It was like, yo, man, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the, the first black writer in Hollywood. And he goes through the whole movie and his, his boy uh Cochise dies in the movie. Right. And at the end they play it so hard to say goodbye and everybody cried during that part. Right. But Cooley High was such a pivotal movie because Eric Monte was the real life ca- person that the character Preach was 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 patterned after. Mm. So in real life, Preach ended up making it to Hollywood. And that's when he met with Norman Lear. And, and Norman and, Lear is the guy that came up with the Jeffersons, no, no, Good no, Times, no, no, all no, no, that. No, 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 Listen. That was Norman Lear. No, no. Eric Monte wrote all that. But that's what I'm saying. And Norman he stole Lear. it. Exactly. He stole that's it right. from Eric Monte. So he gets out to California and starts writing everything. He met Lionel from Good Times, mm. who was on a show called Maud first. Right. And he said, yo, man, listen, I heard that you're a good writer. I want you to write a synopsis for a TV show where, where I'm in it. And if, then I'll take it to Norman Lear, and I will get it done. And that's what he did. Mm. He wrote the Jeffersons' uh, first uh, episode, and it was the it was, it was the um, the pilot. Right. That eventually, be, but Norman said, "Oh, nobody's gonna uh, uh, you know believe a black man calling a white man a hunky. This will never fly." But guess what? It event it, it did work. Yeah. See what I'm worked. saying? And I'm talking about Eric Monte because I don't think enough people are talking about him. Norman Lear just died with a legacy as a billionaire. Eric Monte right now is living in a homeless shelter. Yep, I seen okay? that. Nobody is even. This brother was really the first black legitimate writer in Hollywood. Yep. Okay, and he doesn't have a leg to stand on. You know why? Norman Lear blackballed him and stole all of his materials. And That's be- just like the lady who um wrote the uh, Terminator and um, oh oh you know what uh, 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 Sophia Stewart. Yes, yes. I was on the phone with her for seven hours. Mm. Okay. I know that I'll- was a good conversation. <sighs> No, that conversation. You know, she told me that Third Eye was supposed to be ten sequels, mm. everybody black, and she said Jesus Christ was even in that thing. Mm. <laughs> That's how crazy it was. It was really elaborate. And the thing is, they, first of all, they couldn't understand how black women from, from the Bronx, right, could even write something so elaborate. Right. 
She took it to Warner Brothers. Oh, we can't do nothing with it, but we got somebody that might be interested. Mm -hmm. She gave them the script. A couple years later, she's sitting in the movie theater, and she starts bugging out, like, yo, this yep, is my, this is this my is shit. And she's like, yo. She went to a lawyer. They ended up, <laughs> like, literally buying a lawyer out and, and embarrassing her to the point where it looked like she was crazy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Long story short, they ended up taking all the Terminators and all the Matrixes. Yep. And making all of those... Sequels, sequels and all the things based on a film called Third Eye, a script called right. Third Eye, and and once again, they capital and I got a thousand stories like this, and going back to stealing from black people, Yo. And, and even and, in the music industry, it's the same oh, way. Man, that's a whole. We've nother. been getting robbed. For, <laughs> so the the thing about it is, is this: <laughs> us as black people are so innovative, so fucking much, so so much, so warriors, so brilliant intelligent but yet back then white people didn't look at us even as human beings we were property to them oh no no hold on hold on we're still three-fifths of, of a man in the constitution of the three-fifth clause is still upheld mm -hmm. okay and for those who don't know what that means and it was based around the voting prospect so it would take five black votes to equal three right. in, that, in that context which which would bring it back to the three-fifth clause and I was talking to a brother, uh, Andy Green, uh, former councilman from the Bronx. Right. He's one of the few people that you know had the balls to say, you know, we got to deal with this issue. Right. Right after he proposed to try to deal with that issue, he they all this scandal came up about him and sexual harassment and all this stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't, you know, I, I can't get into, but it's just a coincidence how all of this stuff pops up when he's trying to right a wrong that's, that's been uncorrected for so long. Right. So the three fifths clause is still standing. And there's a lot of jurisdictional prudence that is overlooked in the, in the boundaries because they, once again, like the Willie Lynch syndrome, there's no laws that a white man is bound to respect when it yep. comes to a black man. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it, wouldn't that be like a smack in the face when Obama's coming up here talking about black men, you need to vote her in. You need to make sure that you vote for her. Like, why? So listen, if you, if you can't, and once again, he can't do that without singling out other demographics. Mm. That was a totally one-sided issue, and it's a, a, an unwarranted guilt trip, mm -hmm. okay? Unwarranted. Never did he say, well, black brothers, what's going on? Well, let's, let's have a conversation about why you, you know, and we'll, but that quest, those questions were never asked. Automatically, they're going into making us feel bad, making us feel guilty, making us feel ashamed. All right. Once it, everybody has the right to vote how they want to, right? And with that understanding, you can't you can't tell somebody how to vote, right? You can't make somebody feel bad about them placing a the vote the way they want to. But that's basically what he's doing, exactly. Telling you like, yeah. yo, you need black black men, y'all need to vote for her. But no. yet she gets on a major platform and says, no, I'm not going to do anything yeah. specifically for black people. So yeah. why the fuck do we need to vote for her? And that's what a lot of people are saying. You know, you, you know what else I wanted to say? <laughs> so Barack Obama gets up there and says how black men need to vote for this woman, right? I don't believe that she identifies as a black woman, period. And also, when Barack Obama was running for president, because he, he did two terms, he yeah, did eight yeah. years, right? Yeah, yeah. He chose Biden as his running mate. At that time, Kamala Harris was running as, you know what I'm saying, to be in that position as well. He could have chose her to be his running mate. Yeah. You didn't. He didn't. You chose the white man that actually <laughs> wrote a crime bill that sent most of your people to jail after Reagan and y'all brought in matter the drugs that y'all brought into the country. Oh, yeah. The, 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 uh, the Ron Contra scandal. Yeah, yeah, you I go. Don't, I don't think a lot of people really understand. Elaborate. What that Let them know. Because I know. Special shout out to my brother, um, uh, Freeway Ricky Ross. Okay, um, the real one. Yeah, he's actually on. Not the rapper. Yeah, Free, Freeway Ricky Ross is actually a board member of, of the Hip Hop Fraternity. Oh, okay. And we're actually going to uh, produce this documentary next. Uh, crazy. He's going to go down. So I thought the, that uh, that show, um, Snow, was about him. Snowfall. Well, you know what happened? When I talked to him about it, he told me that it was about him. <laughs> and did he get any money off of that? What's his name? Um, the director, uh, I'm not John sure. Singleton. Oh yeah, he John died. Singleton John Singleton came to Freeway Ricky Ross, and and so they both he bought the, he brought him to the table, 
But he, they said that the studio said, okay, listen, John, you want to get paid or you want him to get paid? Mm. <laughs> and we kind of see how it, what, what, how it transpired because at that point, that's when he started changing things around. Right. He went from like a bald head to now a head full of hair. Right. And but but you know what? That's crazy. Knew. So you said John Singleton was sold sold him out for his own. Yeah, and he even said it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and rest in peace to John Singleton. Yeah. You know, but but is he really resting in peace knowing that he got yeah, this he, hit he, series out that he kind of stole from his, yeah, his he, brother he man? Had a, he had a great opportunity to do the right thing, and he didn't, you know, unfortunately. He could have still gave him portions of whatever he earned from it, but having this guy tell the true story. Like, mm -hmm. Snowfall is a good show, because I watched it, I, I binge-watched it, and I seen the whole thing, and it was definitely similar to what was yeah. really happened from Freeway Ricky Ross story. So why couldn't he be involved in that, and you get all of the real intel from him and break him off? You didn't have to bump him out for yeah. you to keep your check and do what you need to do. But you know what? There's a lot of house niggas out here, boy. <laughs> and they'll sell their own people through the through the roof to get where they need to be. And that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? But um, Yeah, Freeway Ricky Ross got caught up in, you know what? Y'all got to watch the movie called Kill the Messenger. I heard of that. That's the, that's the story about the, um, the what's his, uh, it was a, the journalist who broke the story about the um, Iran Contra scandal, which eventually created the momentum that got exposed the story of the CIA right. coordinating this whole drug operation, you know, uh, with the Contras and Nicaragua, uh, uh, Manuel Noriega. Right. So they basically came to a point where they said, "Okay, listen, we uh, President Reagan went to Congress." And said, "Okay, I need a, we need a billion dollars to fight this war in the Contras." Mm -hmm. Congress said, "Yo, that ain't got nothing to do with us, man. We're exactly. not, we not giving you no billion dollars." So he's like, "Okay." So then he went to CIA and said, "Okay, listen, y'all get the money however you want to get it." And they said, "For real? <laughs> yeah. However y'all got to get it, get the money." They said, "Okay," and they already they already knew how to do right. it. Right. So they're the ones who went into action. Oliver North. Mm -hmm who's now the president of the National Rifle Association. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is crazy, but it transpired. But the, the worst part was how they made it look like this one black man. Was the guy what? that brought all of the drugs into yeah. Cali. And, and they sent him to jail. How long he did? How much time he did? Like 20 Over 20 years. But the thing is, if you look at it, this was the first time where a, um, a person who was con got convicted based on a testimony of somebody above him. So that's like, you know, you leave, you know, it's, it's, the opposite, it's the other way around. Right. Like the smaller person rats on the big homie right, right, right. Or, or the kingpin. But the big homie the wanted big the homie young black man on. to take the, fel the yeah. fall. And they, he was rotting in jail for years while people were, and the guy who uh, broke the story, the journalist, right. they killed him. How, how are you gonna shoot yourself in the head twice? Exactly. Okay, <laughs> twice. If it was once that, Twice, all right? And they showed it in the movie how he was killed. But for so long, they, they didn't want to talk about that because they it, it went to a deeper rabbit hole that opened up a bunch of can of worms. Yo, you know what's so crazy about America, man? And I ain't going to front. I be repping my country so well. But, yo, they do black people so bad in this country. And this country was built off of the sweats of our backs. Oh, yeah. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And we still, still to this day, like, the... Our hip hop culture is such an economical generation machine oh, for this this country's economic system and the influence from it. Mm -hmm. It's a legacy. They even they even started like making artists rap about criminal activity so they can fill up their jails because wow. most of the rich people started mm -hmm. investing in their private jails. So they're like, we got to fill these jails up. What better way to do it by inciting these people to do crimes? So this drill shit that's going on, the government is extremely happy about this. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why it's a war out on, on, on rappers to send them to jail. You oh, know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, oh, hold on. The thing is this. Def Jam was the first um, label to invest in the uh, prison yeah. industrial complex. And what they did was they said, okay, listen, we got a way where y'all can, can make millions of dollars without selling no albums. They said, oh, oh, what you talking about? How are we going to do that? Just they, rap about crime. No, no, no. They said, that's when they came to them and said, listen, investing in these privatized prisons, your turnaround would be in the millions and you wouldn't have to sell one album to get this kind of money. Right. 
So the first go round, they said, oh, wow, this is amazing. So they wanted to throw it back in the pot. They said, okay, now we're going to show you how to quadruple the money. They said, how are we going to do that? They said, you guys control the narrative. If the narrative is gangster rap culture, you're influencing hip hoppers to indulge in crime, violence, criminal activity. And criminal yep. activity. Yep. So they said, wow, we never thought about it like that. This is when they said, yes, and if you want this to work for you, you're going to have to get rid of that conscious rap and uh, cross over to gangster rap yep. because that's who we're targeting for the, for the prison industrial complex. Mm -hmm. And that's and when they monopolized NW, off NWA of it. was formed. Yes. And, and see, if it was that's really, true. if you look at how that happened, it could have it's never crazy. happened no other way unless it was to work for those entities. And you know what's so crazy about this, y'all? You know who was the lead guy of this gangster rap shit? Easy E. Mm -hmm. And you know who his guy was? Oh, yeah. Jerry Heller. Heller, yep. <laughs> see, see how it works? It all falls back down to some white guy that wants to try to take down. He made Easy E feel like, oh, he, I got something good here. We're going to do this. You're doing this. You're going to do that. I'm going to make sure that you win with this shit and we're going to get this shit to the national level. Oh, yeah. And, Jerry they, and see, they utilize the freedom of, freedom of speech yep. in order to do it. And let me don't get me wrong. I love freedom of speech and I agree with it, but... I don't like when people manipulate the circumstances in order to use that speech freedom to harm others, to kill others, and to influence wrong activity and criminal activity. You ever notice why I call, uh, um, uh, what's her name? What's her name? Uh, Sexy Red? Oh, you ever God. notice why Sexy Red came out of nowhere with all of these fucking hoochie songs and, and disrespecting herself and making women feel like they could be like just hoochies and, 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 and sluts and shit like that and that's yeah. all she rap about that's you know what I mean she, it was a plant yeah, yeah. she was planted there for She's that a serious plant Let me you tell know you, what I'm saying when I first saw her when I first saw, when she first got on my radar she did a video in a parking lot of Planned Parenthood and the name of the song was I Got Murder on My Mind wow you gotta check this out and I if y'all don't know Planned Parenthood, that's the abortion clinic. Oh, God, man. So when she says she got murder on her mind, yeah. that means she wants to go and kill babies. And, and that's was, what Planned Parenthood was invented for so they can stop black people from making babies. Yes, yes. That's what it was all yeah. about, if y'all didn't know. And see, and see, this one thing you got to watch out with Kamala, too. Her main campaign is a man can't tell you what, it, what, you, exactly. what to do with your body. And you got to look at the wordplay here because it's yep. a manipulation tactic. If she came out and said... Yeah, we're going to allow you guys to kill your babies. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, yep. I'm not a killer. Right. But she reworded it. <laughs> you see and what I'm saying? saying? Oh, women rights, we can do what we want yeah. with our bodies. But listen to this. What's so crazy about this, right? They want women to be like, oh, we can do whatever and this and that, this and that, right? But check this out. So now, if a man has a baby or a man gets a woman pregnant, right, and he don't want to be with her, or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. And they didn't use contraceptive or whatever the case may be, right? Why would a man, if a man, if it was like, well, if a man didn't want that baby and you kept it anyway, and we, he's not going to be liable to pay child support or anything for that baby, you think women would be out here just having babies by motherfuckers? No, they wouldn't. Exactly. And see, when it comes to them, you know, it, it once again, it, it's it's a double standard because you you could say, okay, I don't want to have a child, and, and then the woman can say, well, I do. And then you got to pay for it. Correct. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I definitely believe that, you know, um, it's, both parents should have, a, of course. have should have an interest in supporting a child, raising a child. And I do be be believe that the best way to do that is in a nuclear family with both parents. Right. Unfortunately, we had over 70% uh, uh, ratio now of one single parent households. Yeah, but it's also said that children are raised better with a two-parent household or a father yeah. as a single parent. I'll say now, okay, so now look at this, right? If we know statistically that the data shows that the father being uh, raising a child by, by himself or the mother and father, both statistics are the same. Correct. Okay? And then when the single mother comes into the picture, all of those statistics go down the drain by 85%. So why does every time the, the courts always are awarding the mother custody? So, and this is what bugs me out. So the courts will always award the mother custody of a child, right? Yeah. But yeah. yet 
the woman is not the the, the, the better household for the child. Because if you got to give the mother child support, right, why would the child go with her if she can't afford to take care of that baby? Exactly. If the man can afford to take exactly. care of that baby, why can't the baby be raised by that father? And the mother comes and gets the child on weekends and exactly. different stuff like that because they want it like that. They oh, no, want no, no. this child support to be given yeah. because they make money off the child support. It's not even about the child. Well, no, no, not only that. I found out that Family court judges are right. the only judges whose pension plan and retirement is contingent upon garnishment of wage, of money Look at that shit. in court. And I got proof of this. I'm going to wow. send you a link. Matter of fact, hold on. We could look. We could look that um, shit up right now. Let's read that shit right now. That's a call. Hold it's on, a hold whole on. scam with child support. I'm telling you. Um, and I've been paying that shit for 16 years, man. Yo, I just I just, I just got done with that. Oh, I know oh. that extra money coming in. It, it looks, it looks different, doesn't it? Way different, man. Word, I'm man. Excited. I just told my son the other day, man. I'm, a, I'm gonna get into some deep shit with y'all too right now, cause my 16 year old, you know, he sent me a report card the other day, and I was so proud of him. That's good. Like, oh, my son was his grades are so good, and I'm so happy, and this and that, and boom, 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 because me and his moms actually went through a lot of drama and court battles and stuff like that, and I paid child support to her. One time she told me that my child support don't do nothing. But yet now my son is a teenager. He now gets the card and the money goes directly to him. Mm -hmm. It's everything for him. But listen, the report card that he sent me was bogus. Are you serious? Yeah, it was some progress report that he had. <laughs> so the teacher, one of his teachers called me and he sent me the real report card. Yo, I was fucking, I was infuriated and embarrassed by the shit. So I went over and I talked to him and I said to him, I said, listen, with those grades you got, bro, you ain't going to college if you wanted to. Now, I don't know, he's already said he's not feeling school. Obviously, he's not feeling school if he ain't doing well. But you ain't getting in no type of college with those grades. So uh -huh. either you're going to learn a trade you gonna come in here and run this business with me and be an entrepreneur or something, or you just gonna take all of the city job oh, tests? Oh, they go right here. You know what I'm saying? Title 4, 4D of the Social Security Act. Mm -hmm. All right, Google that. Now, what you were talking about the trades? Yeah. They systemically took all of the trade program, vocational programs, out of the high schools right. in New York City in the uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s, Yep. because they started realizing how it was interfering with the school to prison pipeline. Mm. They found out that a child who has a trade could sustain himself and support a family without indulging in a criminal lifestyle. Yep. And they said, that's not what we want. We, we need to box these kids into where either they go to college or they go to jail. Mm. Mm. So if you got a public school system that's broken and doesn't prepare them for college, where else he gonna go? To you jail. Know, exactly. If you got a pharmaceutical company whose interest whose interest is delves into the public schools with the learning uh, disability. Right. All it takes is a school psychologist to say, oh, your child has one of the 12 learning That's disabilities. That's uh, that IEP they call it. Yeah. So now under, the, under that context, they say, okay, your child has to be evaluated uh, for a learning disability. Oh, yeah. He has a learning disability, and we need, we need to put him in this program. And that's when the, the, the mother's, all right, nothing wrong with my child. Right. Okay, well, this is how much money you'll get every month for your child. Being, oh, oh, I got two other kids. You want to yep. evaluate them too? Yep. They literally sell them out at that point. And the thing is this. Now we're going to show you how much you get, you get, but the child has to take this medication now. So what that medication does is it- Makes them crazy. It actually gives them what they falsely with that diagnosed with, but in actuality what it does, it slows down the brain function level. Mm. To the point where that child can't keep a job or maintain in society without interfering, coming into contact with the criminal, with, with crime. Right. You see what I'm saying? So all of these elements that go again. Let me tell you something. When I was 10 years old, my mother gave me a book. And I encourage every parent right. to read this book. It's called the Conspiracy, Countering the Conspiracy to Kill Black Boys. Mm. And at 10 years old, I was like shell-shocked by reading this thing. I'm so glad my mother gave it to me because it really prepared me for for what I was going up against. And, and that the, right there, her giving you that book and you reading it and you learning, yeah. giving you knowledge of self at oh, such man. a young age is probably what made you who you are today. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know? I'm going to give that book to my son because he yeah. needs to read that. Oh, you know what? There's like, three, there's like three different three of them now. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, and, they're, and they're like, they, 
Because uh, these young teenagers now, you, you could talk to them to their faces blue, yeah. and it seemed like that they need to figure it out on their own. So I, I'm gonna be, I'm there to guide him. But I like when I went to go see him the other day because when I figured that his report card was so good, I went out there, chilled with him, gave him a couple hundred dollars. Like yo, I'm so proud of you, son. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, you know, I know their school be texting me about problems, but why would they be texting me so much if your grades is this high? Like yeah. what, what's the problem? Is it, is it a scandal or something like that that they trying to come at you or whatever? But then when the teacher called me a few weeks later and told me the real shit. And they yeah. sent me the real report card. I took my ass right back out there, and I was like, "Yo, give me all my bread back, bro." <laughs> and when I when I rolled up on him and I pulled up, he was like, "Dad, I know what you out here for." He thought I was about to fuck him up because I'm very aggressive when it comes to my kids yeah. and them doing right. But I I had to think about it for a second, and I'm like, "Damn, if I floor him and bust his ass right now, that ain't gonna do nothing." That's gonna you know what I'm saying? Anger. You right. That's gonna justify him being mad at you now. Right. And you know it, it has. Um, Right, so what yeah, I told him yeah, was, yeah. I, I took the bread back because I'm like, I'm not rewarding failure. Yeah, that's that's one thing you I'm not gonna do. I'm saying you get your child support every other week or whatever the case may be. But all this extras I'm giving you is a dub. You got to show me that you really want this. I said, so now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to come up to your school and meet up with the teachers, and I'm going to be in your school now, and you're going to see me there. And I'm like, this is your fo this is your only warning of me talking to you. I'm only going to talk to you this time. Because I know you expected me to come up here and flip on you and wild out on you and shit like that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm talking to you because you're a young man now. And I want you to do right by yourself. And it's my job as your father to make sure that you excel and succeed in life. You feel me? So I'm not here to beat up on you and do anything. I'm talking to you because like, you're a young man. And you got to understand, with those grades, you're not going to excel, you know what I'm saying, academically in college or school or anything like that. But now... Once you turn 18, this child support that you're getting from me is going to stop. Mm -hmm. And your mom's, she's not going to be taking care of you at an 18-year-old because you see how she was with your brother. She forced him to go get a job or whatever like that because she's struggling doing her own thing, trying to make her own, live her own life. So I'm trying to prepare you that when you become 18 and you're a young man here, it's going to be hard if you ain't got some type of skills or know-how. I'm like, what is it that you want to do? Do you want to run a clothing line? That's a business. Oh, you know what oh, I mean? You know what? Speaking of that, I just became the COO of an uh, organization called the Winter Circle. And what we do at the Winter Circle is we help uh, designers and regular people launch their clothing lines. So that's something that we could talk about too. Yo, I'm telling y'all, man, if y'all are watching this show and y'all or y'all seeing this in a rebroadcast, y'all need to follow him at James C B Gray on Instagram. All of these organizations and all of these opportunities that he have for you guys, I think y'all need to really, really utilize it and take advantage of this stuff. This is the main reason why I wanted him up here. Like, I'm really promoting the Lucy the movie that I'm in because this is my debut, acting debut, yeah, yeah. and I met him on set. Yep. He's the one that supplied all of the fake guns and the police uh, um, uh, artifacts and everything like that for the movie, but there was so much other stuff that we spoke about that I was so intrigued by because in all actuality, my third eye is open. And being the fact that I have a platform where I could come up here and I could speak about this positive stuff for my, for my people to understand what it is, I'm not, I don't have to be out there doing extra wild shit to let y'all know I can just feed y'all the information through this. And I'll push it on y'all that way. But I have sons out here. Yeah. And I really want my sons to be able to, you know, not have to worry about a lot of the shit that's going on in life because, yo, it can be hard out here. And they quickly to throw our peoples in jail mm -hmm. for anything. anything. You know what I'm saying? But yet y'all open up the borders and let migrants and everything come in. And so far, we didn't have migrants beating up on cops, shooting people, oh, uh, running up in buildings and taking over buildings like it was the Carter from fucking. Uh, look, look, they got they had a whole thing where one of the cops that got assaulted on Times Square, mm -hmm. his wife told the news she said yo my husband told me that they told them don't be so aggressive with the with the migrants but if you see a black person do what you got to do wow and when i heard that i said are you serious because you got to look with the audacity back in the days a migrant was under the radar he would never even try to come in contact with the cops you know why because he going back exactly where he came from exactly do you know that the democrats just voted on a bill to no to not charge Migrants for sexual crimes against... And it's nothing but sexual offenders <laughs> here. And Yo. everybody know, let's keep it 100. Everybody know like in like the certain Latin community, they definitely were touching their little girls and their little boys oh, and yeah, their family. Yeah. 
That's a fact. That's Just right. like they say, oh, black people always, do, they don't have, their, their father's not around. They go to jail. It's a fact that in the Latin community, a lot of them uncles and fathers and brothers be touching their little motherfucking peoples and they fucking fit. <laughs> and everybody knows this. I heard about that too. Everybody knows that. I didn't spoke to a lot of Latin people that I knew for years and they said it. Yeah, that's something that's, so that's like with the priest. The priests are also oh, known man. for touching the, the boys that's in a all boys school and shit like that. Like to me, that priesthood shit is like a little harem of pedophiles yeah, yeah, yeah. that's hidden in the yeah. priesthood community. Yeah. And, and getting even deeper, Puffy went to an all boys school. Mount Saint Michael. And one of the the guy, yeah. he was arrested for mm -hmm. sexual assault to the young students. Yep. And Puffy was in the school at that time. <laughs> yep. So why you think Puffy might have this little infatuation with these young boys and stuff? Because he was touched by this yeah. priest. And you know that priest was moved to another state and he's still teaching in schools? But see, that's what they do. The archdiocese, what they do, when, when they get a complaint, they just move these guys around. They send them on missions. Yeah, they, they move these guys around. Because That's crazy. Number one, this is an indoctrination of their culture, okay, and it continues to go on, but it's not solved. They give, they'll give that church some money, get a family some money, and move this guy to another location, and it's not even that's not even a solution. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah, they, and, and, yeah, yeah. You know what's hey. crazy about all of this? And I ain't going front. I'm going deep in the rabbit hole with this shit. <laughs> now you know when you say third world countries, right? Right. People go to certain countries and they'll do certain crimes that they can't do in certain countries, right? Okay. Like, for instance, you see how weed is so freely smoked and everywhere. You can't go to Dubai and do that. You can't go to okay, mad countries yeah, and not yeah. even... Like that 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 lesbian girl that went to Russia with the little vape weed stuff. <laughs> you see how she was in jail. They had to trade some killer motherfucker Yo, for her. That was the real guy in real life from the movie um, well, Lords of War. You know yeah, that was, the, that real was guy. the real guy. And they <laughs> traded him for this lesbian basketball girl. So that, guns. yeah, yeah, that, that, would, that, that, that was willing. Like, she willingly went there with those weed cartridges in her bag. Yeah, yo, it's, it's crazy. Yo, it's it's weird. But now man. look back to the resource thing, right? right. That's one thing I'm real big on is resources because a lot of a lot of platforms talk about the problems, but I, I try to look for solutions too. Right. So go Google. Um, Google certifications. Oh, I'm on, I'm on, um, let me get out of this. Google certifications. The reason I'm saying that is because Google has four or five certifications right now that you can get that can start you making over $80,000 a year. Uh, AI and a, and, a, and a couple of others. All right. What? Now, when you say certificate, this is a oh, certificate. Yeah, no, yeah, well, it's, it's certifications. Google, this Google, Google, Google certifications. Cause it's, it's from Google. Okay. And um, what they do is they, they give you this whole program and this whole course that you go through to train you for these occupations. And when you're done, they offer you a job first, but with the certification, you could practically get a job anywhere. So what right here, career one stop certifications. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see what that's about. Is that it? Career one stop? No, no, no. It's a Google thing. Oh. Go back, go back. I think I just saw it. Okay, let's go back to that. Let's check it out. Go, go to the top. That's the meaning right, of certification. I see right here where you got certifications up at the top. Right. No, no, in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, at the top. Right here? No, 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 down. Right here? Right, right, right there. This one? See what that is? Oh, we need to bring the face. Yeah. In the front of the certifications, put Google. Right okay. here, right here. Okay. Go down to that one, right, right there. All right, Google certifications. Google career certifications. All right. Now, that shows you all, look at cybersecurity, data, data analytics, IT support, digital mark. These right here, once you get done with this course and get this, get certified, you can start at, look at that, 93,000. Wow, I said learn the skills you need to unlock reward outcome in 93,000 plus a year, 1.8 million exactly. plus. And Jobs posted across certificate certi certif certificate skills fields. Now, if you can prove that you're living below poverty level, there's organizations that'll pay the fee for you to get this these courses mm. for free. Okay, I, I said I, I gave this information on the podcast like about 150 people now. Like, yo, thank you, man. I got a job working for Google, working for these IT networks and all this stuff. And this is another alternative to prison. 
Yo, everybody, <laughs> go on Google certifications. It says, it says actually say career certificates, yeah. but you want to go to, I think it's grow.google. Yeah, That's it's, what it's, it's saying a, it's up here. It's a here. Google thing. Yeah, just, just go to grow.google and it's Google certifications. It'll be learn jobs, ready skills with a Google career certificate. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to go to this because I'm looking at it right now and it's and it's crazy. Like, it's this shit crazy. Let me bookmark this shit. So you know, can, that right, I, so many young people I sent this to, they said, oh my God, I love AI. I love data analytics. And, and when you get when you get the interest of a teen or a young adult who's interested in something mm -hmm, already, mm -hmm. that's half the battle. They already have the motivation to want to do something right. Nobody really, it's really not many people that say, you know what, I'm just a criminal, ain't nothing else I could do. Right. Okay, when you look at the, the social economic reflection of their reality, a lot of times bends them toward something wrong to hopefully get enough money to do something right. Right. But if we can counteract that situation and give them an opportunity before they go wrong, then that's where we win. And that's when we strengthen our resources. That's when we start building more black owned businesses. And that's one thing that really builds black communities. Yes. And there's not enough resources for black communities right here to even invest in ourselves. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And that's one thing I'm trying to do is raise the awareness and bring the resources with solutions at the same time. Yo, so you got you so far. We've been here for like now an hour and then an hour and twenty minutes, and you've given us so much insight and so much opportunity to go and make some stuff happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like people that's watching this episode or even rewatching it on the broadcast when we come on Thursdays and Rough Riders and iHeart and stuff like that, y'all really need to go into some of the things that he spoke about. And and I'm telling you right now, you can look up that Google cert, uh, that career, that Google career certificates and everything like that because I'm looking at it right now. This is and another it's alternative to the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And it's pre practically, even if you had to pay for it, it's only a couple thousand, I think. You know, which is nothing compared to what these colleges are charging for degrees that don't make no money. Right. See, that's another big problem. I was talking to the young Colleges lady. were invented to just put people in debt to me. Well, I mean, you, uh, loans, student yeah. loans, I mean, Let not me colleges. You, I, and the reason is because a lot of young black females get caught up in... Man, I've seen majors that I never heard before. Mm. And I said, why are you majoring in this? Exactly. Oh, well, it, because it's an easy course and you're getting a student... But if you look at it, Statistically, black males go for degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm. And guess what? Those are all degrees in which you can literally hit the ground running and make right. money to pay off the student loan debt if you have to do that. But the females, they're going into a lot of psychology, psychology and, and all that like, shit. No disrespect to that, but what you got to look at is how long are you going to be in debt now? So most of them, 70% of black women are not working in their degree. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Not only are you not working in your degree, you're working in something else trying to pay off this debt. So by the time you pay off the debt to a certain point, to where, okay, you know what? Now I can focus on, you, you've you been out the system for so long. Correct. And they said, well, and, and let me tell you, somebody went to Congress and they said, okay, they had this whole big survey they did. And the survey said, that if you if you have a bad credit score, you're more likely to steal from the company that you work for. That's crazy. Of course, this is a white person that came up with this study. Wow. During, so when he made the presenta presentation in Congress, they said, "Oh wow, this is great. This is a this is an amazing way to deny somebody a job mm. that has bad credit or bad credit history." So what they do is they say, "Okay, you you come out of college, you got your degree." But guess what? Your credit score is bad because of student loan debt. Right. Well, you're a great person. You're looking at your grades, degree, everything's great. But according to this statistic, you're more like your mm. liability at, with, with, with your bad credit score. What we encourage you to do is go to McDonald's, Starbucks or whatever. Just try to hustle up some money to try to get this That's student crazy. loan thing down. So now they do that for a couple of years sometimes. Mm -hmm. They come back. That's when they say, all right. You've been off the scene too long. We need somebody fresh out right. with a degree. And you know who's fresh out with a degree? A lot of those white students that didn't have to get student loans. You see what I'm saying? So this is just another level of disenfranchisement as a, as a, as a way where a lot of black people are trying to do the right thing and still get still fall through the cracks. It does, it's, just, it's just, it's so fucking discerning to me that like even when 
slaves were supposedly be freed, there were so many obstacles put in the way to deter black people from winning. And we still like like got through the odds and made it happen because when they were white flight and they started giving black people project apartments and telling them to break their families up to give the woman this stuff, which that shit worked. That's why you got so many women out here talking about they don't need no man and they can do it by themselves and they're oh, a single God. mom and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like when they was doing that white flight shit, a lot of the white people that moved to upstate and moved to Long Island and all that, the banks were told by the governments to make sure that you give them home loans but when black people come in for home loans you don't you don't give that to them they are not eligible for these loans they are not eligible for these home loans and you know why because they wanted white people to have homes so they could have equity to send their children to school and do all of the things like that off the equity of having these homes and get a better a better generational start for their for their families mm -hmm. as opposed to where they were giving black women apartments with their children and telling them the man can't be there and giving them welfare so they could always be depending on the government. And they don't want to go out there and work. They don't want to go out there and produce. And, you know, whatever the child sees in the home, that's what they usually come up off of. You know what I mean? And this is one of the reasons why me, myself, I'm so prone to show my sons that a man and a woman is what it's supposed to be. That's the family the structure. The nuclear family. is a man and a woman. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And this is why when I, as they were growing up, I was always affectionate to their moms, showing them like I, I was loving, loving to her and everything like that because with all of the things that they're doing now with the LGBTQ community, they're trying to make younger kids feel that it's okay for them to want the same sex. Mm -hmm. And that's not cool. That's not cool. You can't push that on somebody because now a young child that's being raised by two women or two men, now they're confused because just because that child is raised by two women or two men, that doesn't make that child want the same sex. They natural hormones that they have when they go through puberty because a child going through puberty is like an older woman going through menopause. It's a whole different body change in their life. So when you're going through puberty, you can't say you're interested in men only if you're a guy or a woman just interested in girls because you haven't experienced anything yet. But yet they're pushing the agenda so hard to make kids feel like, oh, I don't think I, a, a woman, a, a young girl, I don't think I want a man, I want to be with a girl. How you know you want to be with a girl? But see, look, they, they target them at the most confused time. Right. And that's why I'm saying, you know, I just, I just want everybody I just, you know, my whole thing is I just want us to let children be children. If they get to a, the right to the, the right age and make that decision, right, cool. But the more you expose them, like when you have textbooks that the kids can't bring home to the parents, that's part of an agenda. Right. They don't want the parents you know to know what they're teaching. Matter of fact, if you look at the uh, what was it um, on a on the new voting thing, they have uh, one. They have one of those things on the back, um, where you you got to vote for, vote on. It's number one, actually. Um, they said something about you supposed to pick no for that one. It's some it's yeah, some law so, that they pass, and you supposed to vote yeah, no. My, my friend sent me the whole breakdown of mm -hmm. it, and when I read it, it was it was about them right. denying parents the opportunity to be involved in right. some of these curriculums. It was also about them allowing men to compete in women. I, I listen. I don't understand that stuff. All right, now I want. I'm glad you brought that up because I was waiting to segue I, into you that. Know, I don't. I, when I when I say that, you know, men and women are different, and in every way, so, so many ways to where physically. Yep, physically, you could have the weakest guy on the team, but he's still stronger than them women, and he's stronger than the the strongest woman, and we know this to be a fact. There's no way in the world that a man should be playing female sports or a man should be in a female bathroom. No disrespect to nobody. I just don't understand how we got to, how we evolved to a point where that is something that people are pushing. That a man could say, I'm a woman because he's wearing a dress and now we have to abide by yeah, that. I, I don't, As, or a woman could say, I'm a man because I want to dress like a guy and now I'm supposed to I let, uh, uh, be brainwashed and, and, and delusional to believe that you now are a man because you want to identify as a man. So if I say I'm identifying as a billionaire and I go in that bank and I tell a teller, listen, <laughs> I need I need to take uh, uh, $100,000 out my account that's in there because I identify as a billionaire. Is she supposed to honor that? 
And see, this is the delusion that I'm talking about here. Um, it's, 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 it's really getting out of control. It's, it's been out of so control. So just imagine if you were a young girl who all your life you just wanted to be the best that you could be right. as a girl growing into a woman in sports. And now the only thing that has sidetracked your victory is a man who's now competing against you. Right. And, he's, and we got to believe he's a woman. And that's what I wanted to say to you. You see how everybody is talking about, oh, you got to accept the LGBTQ trans community. And if they feel that way, we got to go by it. We got to go by it. But now there's so many commercials out there now that women are saying we have to protect our women and women's rights. Yeah, men now should not, saying this. Women, they said <laughs> women should not have to compete against men in, 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 no in way, sports. Man. But yet y'all were the same people. The same feminists that were saying, oh, we got to treat them equal. Let them be yeah. equal. We, If they feel like they're women, then we got to let them be women. If they want to come into the women's bathroom, they want to come into the women's bathroom. If they're wearing skirts and dresses, you got to identify them as a... But now, y'all feel like y'all kicked yourself in the ass. And these same men, women, trans people are now competing in these sports. And they're dusting these women. I mean, like smoking them. Yeah. I seen a commercial where a trans woman was like so far ahead of the women in a race or so far ahead of them in, in swimming. Like those, that testosterone strength that's in them arms and chest and muscles, you can't take that away just by saying you're a woman. You're still a man. So now these women wanted to be like, oh, everybody's equal. We all got to treat everybody like they, they, who they want to be. Let them be who they want to be. But now they're dusting y'all asses in the sports. Now y'all want to be crying about, oh, protect our women. Why would y'all be going saying that a man could be identified as a woman and let him be coming in the bathroom as a woman? He still got to stand up to pee. Mm -hmm. That don't even make sense to me. That shit is just pure idiocy and stupidity. But then if you say something like that, you are, you're gay bashing. That's like if you say something about the Jews. Like, oh, for instance, man. Jewish people, we all know that they fucking put uh, life insurance policies on their old people and their family so that when they die, they capitalize off of it. Oh, yeah. We all know that Jewish people are married in their Hebrew country and come here and pretend like they're not husband and wife so that the wives could go and get mad welfare while living in a mansion that the husband opened up from the big ass million dollar business that he has. We all know this. But yet you say something like that in a, in a Jewish to a Jewish person in a matter that is not respectable, which I don't know how you could say that respectable. Now you're anti-Semitic. Kyrie Irving, what he said about that book was nothing anti-Semitic about it. And if he has an issue with a uh, different nationality, well, who cares? It is what it is. Man, I seen a post where a Jewish man threw up on a black lady, voluntarily made himself throw up on a black lady. That's how they looked at look at him. That's but okay. so it's okay for them to look at black people differently. But if a black person, a star, a celebrity, says something about a Jewish community, he's anti-Semitic. Like with Kanye West, he's anti-Semitic. Get the fuck out of here. He don't he don't even have to like Jewish people. Yeah. Like as a person, mad people don't like black people. So why the fuck we gotta like everybody? And I think that's the reason why um, slaves were forced to come into the church. We were forced and whipped to come and praise the, 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 the God that the slave masters wanted us to praise because that's all about passiveness and peace. And, oh, you, you, you can't be fighting. Uh, you, it can't be an eye for an eye. You got to pr pray and, and look up to God and it'll get better. He's going to make it better. Well, hold on, hold on. Have you ever seen a movie, uh, Birth of a Nation? I heard of it, but I didn't see it. All right. So it's, it's funny because. I, they actually, there was a picture of me on a Brooklyn Bridge when I was uh, marching right. over the Brooklyn Bridge for the Eric Garner uh, case. And there was a picture of me and Reverend Al Sharpton's daughter, Ashley Sharpton. Mm -hmm. She was in front. And Is I was, that the daughter that said, oh no, that wasn't her, I'm sorry. So she was in front, I was behind her, and I got my fist up in the air, and she got a sign that says, Imagine Justice. That picture went so viral that it made it into the trailer of the Birth of a Nation document, wow. uh, movie. So when they showed the trailer on BET, on, uh, um, the, on the Grammys and all that, everybody called me like, yo, what this so I, that's when I'm like, yo, I gotta see this movie. So they, we did the premiere and what happened was, in the movie you see, uh, what's his name? The main character. In Birth of a Nation, I don't he was, know. He was, he was, a, um, he was a, pre, a slave preacher. Right. And what they used him for 
every time you had slaves in a plantation that were like, you know, weren't going with the system, weren't uh, respecting the master, right. they would bring this slave to that plantation to preach to them. And he would preach to them what they call the slave Bible. Google, right. Google that. Google the slave Bible. Oh, slave Bible? Okay. In the slave Bible, it, rev it, it heavily references honor thy master and a bunch of, 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 of uh, verses that specifically bring you back mentally as a slave to how thankful you should be for your master and how good he is to you and, and, and what your obligation is. And they're exactly what I said. You see what I'm saying? This is, this is the exact reason why <laughs> that they pushed on this uh, whole uh, Catholic religion to us because Look, it, the they, Bible explicitly allowed slavery. See? And that's see? the proof right there. And they wanted us to not be revengeful and angry about it. They wanted us to act like we were supposed to, oh, it's gonna get better, just pray, and it's gonna get better. Right after that motherfucker whipped you and put them lashes on your back, mm -hmm. you were supposed to pray with your family. Now, in, in, the, in the midst of this whole thing, he was going to all these, all these plantations, reiterating the slave Bible to the slaves to get them back on track with their master. And one day he realized, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm the demise of my people. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. And when he broke away from that, that's when the revolt happened. And that was one of the biggest slave revolts that ever was. Right. So after that happened, that's when they said the slaves can no longer beat the drums and dance anymore when they were, weren't working. Because mm. after they come out the, the field, they go back to the slave quarters and they would have these African ritual, sp spiritual ritual ceremonies. They weren't indoctrinated into the uh, into the Bible at that time, right? But this is something. This so this is why when they saw that every slave quarters that allowed their slaves to beat the drums and to and to dance and to practice the African spiritual ritual system, right? They all rose up, killed the masters, and went free. And so, that, that's the shit they don't have in the history books. Exactly. They don't want to talk about that. So now they said, okay, no more beating no drums, no more. We're gonna put a a, a, a slave church on every plantation, specifically for the slaves. And we're gonna teach one of the slaves, the elder that all of them respect, he's gonna become a preacher. See? You see what I'm saying? And that's why they have churches on every fucking block. That's and, why. And we don't know our history a lot of times. That's why. And this is how this cycle keeps on, this is post-traumatic slave syndrome. Exactly. At its finest. And religious indoctrination at the same time. So when people go to church all the time and they feel like they got to give 10% in tithes of their they salary and all man. that shit, man, like, <laughs> you're bugging. You're bugging. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want to you, you praise God or whatever the case may be, you can praise your body your is house. a temple. That's it. Your body is a temple. You can have a connection with God directly without having to pay taxes or tithes on it. Right. And we don't, we don't know that. Plus, most of the fucking pre most most of the priests are pedophiles, and, uh, and and most of the preachers are criminals that are duping the system. Yeah. How how could you be given tides of your money, your hard earned money, and your struggling family, and the priest and the preacher got a, a, a fucking Rolls Royce yeah. and a big mansion? Because he don't got to pay yeah. taxes or nothing on that money. On that. So a lot of people go like the the guy who just was bad. And I know him. I know him. I met him a few times. Oh oh oh, uh, whitehead. Yeah. Yo, that you know what I'm saying? I that seen, cat. I seen, I seen him at the. Uh, <laughs> I seen him at, He'd be backstage at every fucking hip hop event yeah, with I his Gucci him, suits I, I, I on seen him and at stuff. The Derby, uh, Didn't he just get found time. guilty and sent to jail yeah, for he some got shit? Like Twelve years. Yeah. See, look at that shit. Yeah. Twelve years. So the guy was guilty. They said that he set up that whole robbery for that jury. He was like, he ain't do it. Well, you gotta understand before before he all of that happened, he had went to prison for uh, fraud, mm -hmm. identity theft, and all that stuff. And as soon as he comes out of prison, he became a bishop like overnight. And right. I'm like, hold on. What is the process of becoming a bishop? How does that, yo? First of all, the the the, the bishop is that's like a it takes years to get yeah because he's level. like that's like one of the highest levels. You know what I'm saying? That's like you, you have to be an elder a lot bishop of times Whitehead. to even phase into that. It's a, you know, I'm just saying he his criminal record or he spoke for itself. What he was doing with the real estate scams and all of that mm -hmm. stuff, they already knew that something was fishy with him. He has a congregation of about 25 people, and they all black fem young black females. Mm -hmm. All right, the only black males he had was security. That's not even enough money to 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 maintain payments on a Rolls Royce, right? Let alone the mansion that he had. Yep. Then when he started, uh, the lady came forward like, "Yeah, he took this money this and never like paid eighty thousand or something like that, Come and on, never man. did it. He never got the and house." You do that to an like elder. Yep. And you say you're a man of God. See, this what, that's where I, I can't respect it at that level, man. 
Yo, you know, it's crazy out here, man. It's crazy. How you, and it's weird how our own peoples would do it. Yeah. And you know what? That's why I understand with, with um, you know what I'm saying? With, um, oh, shit, that I can't even remember. I'm bugging how I can't even remember her name. What's the the the, the, the railroad? What's the lady? Uh, uh, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Yeah. You know, this oh, is the yeah, reason yeah, why yeah. I understand <laughs> why any slave that went through her uh, uh, the railroad and they snitched, mm -hmm. she killed them. Yeah. Or she killed their ass. They like, said she had the gun, not for the white man, for just in case she had to put down one of her, yep, one of us, one of her own. Like, <laughs> yo, if you if you try to fuck up this organization that I have here that I set up, the Underground Railroad, to get us f to free from these motherfucking these these enslaved colonizers, mm -hmm. you're dead. Yeah, and yeah. I understand that shit because anybody that tries to go against what you're trying to do, they're the enemy, whether they're your own kind or not. Look, so, Master P just put out a video. And he was talking about how his grandmother came to him and said, yo, baby, you know, you you fired my my, my son. You know, what, what? He said, Grandma, listen, no disrespect, but your son was, he was, you know, tearing apart my, my, my business. Right. He wasn't respecting it. He, he I'm, I'm, I'm losing money now because he's not doing the right thing. And he's and he know that I can't fire him because <laughs> you might, you know. You know because he's family. But he so had to he make a decision go. internally that was going to protect his business. Right. And that's, and what that's how it's supposed to, to be. Yeah. That's how it really has to be. Hey, yo, we here right now, you know what I'm saying, with our special guest, James C.B. Gray. He's said a lot of influential, inspirational things and gave y'all a lot of insight on how you can make shit happen. If y'all on the live or y'all watching, you can tune in or call up 516-540-1684. Ask some questions, whatever you need to know about him and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, now I want to get more because we, we already damn near an hour and a half into the show already. You know what I'm saying? I want to get more into, like, <clears throat> what's some of the, the other things that you're involved in like we already got like a lot of full story about like you know what I'm saying what you're involved in as far as like the movies and things of that sort like what is yeah. some of the other stuff that you're involved in well you know it's funny it's, it's, it's more like what, what am I not involved with right 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 <laughs> and of course I'm not involved with any criminal activity of any right. kind okay I'm all about uplifting my people you know, I became an activist because I wanted to find out how I could help the most people. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got with the, you know, National Action Network. That's how I got with the Arc of Justice. That's how I got with the Strong Enough Achievements Foundation. That's how I got with Street Corner Resources and all these other entities that are doing great work in the black communities. Right. And, you know, that really gave me a purpose. And that's another thing that I encourage people to look for your purpose. Right. You know, don't look so much of what you can get from people because there's a lot of people that live their life just getting over. Mm -hmm. And, and not I know even, a lot of them. Yeah, they're not even living and they're not prospering because they have that crab in the barrel mentality Correct. so bad that it doesn't even allow you to get blessings because you never think for one minute, what can I do for others? Right. You know, It's all about me, 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 me. What can I what do? Can I, and, and, and a lot of these people take advantage of good people mm -hmm. and they still never learn the, the lesson of how to overcome their circumstances and be blessed because in their mind, it, there never was a prospect about blessing others and doing right by others. So that, and that's just something that I, that I not pre only preach, but um, I'm always reiterating right. because I want people to understand how important it is for you to help others and to be of selfless service. Right. You know, I think of myself last a lot of times because there's so many people in front of me that need help. Mm. And I'm always trying to find solutions to help people. And I know this sounds political, but it's real. Like, I didn't want to become a politician. I became a politician because I was tired of begging politicians for money <laughs> to, help the, help, to help the community. Right, right, right. I said, I can go straight to the horse's mouth by becoming a politician, doing what I want to do that's already going to help the people. Right. Bringing the money back where it needs to go. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't just all about money. It was really about resources. You know, all, all my life I've just been looking at ways to to help more and more people. Mm -hmm. So when that prospect, I became a uh, an activist. I became a politician. I became um, a community, you know, uh, activist. And, and you know, I dealt with the community engagement and, mm -hmm. and provided resources on many different levels. So I always knew I had to. I wanted to affiliate myself with organizations and entities that were doing the work. And that, like, once again, that came down to all these other organizations that I'm a part of or formerly with, you know, like I said, with the National Action right. Network, you know. Um, what would you say was the first thing that you got into that started your journey off? 
Like, cause I know when we, when we, when we were young teenagers, we were just doing regular stuff. And we, we know, like when I was young, I was a criminal, uh -huh. right? Uh, but I've always, like every time I got arrested or whatever, or got, and got probation or something like that, I always stayed in school. I always wound up having a job. Yeah. No matter if I was doing crimes, I always made sure that I stayed in school and I, or, or I kept a little, little, little job, whether it was Wendy's or, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Trying to do some shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what, what, what made you feel that you was, cause whatever you did in the, in your early years made you who you are today. Yeah. Well, you know let me tell you, number one. I'm uh, second oldest of nine children. Mm, wow. So in that capacity, I was always in a leadership position. Mm, I was, was seven younger than you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so my mother told me when I was very young, she said, listen, everything you do, they're watching you. And if you do something wrong, they're going to feel like there's something that they can do. Right. So your influence is something very pivotal in their lives. And I want you to understand how important it is for you to set an example for the younger ones. Mm. So I always had that, and I developed a, a reputation of being res responsible and trustworthy to the point where there's certain kids who couldn't even come outside unless their parents knew I was outside. Right. You know, there, there was parents who trusted me with $100 bills as at five years old, knowing I would bring back change and a receipt. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I never wanted to have anybody think that they couldn't trust me or rely on me because I knew how important it was to set that standard and to reflect the character. And, and see, once again, mm -hmm. my family structure, my father was one of the few black men that lived in the household on our block. Right. So I was directly exposed to a black man of integrity, of faith, of honor. My father was the president of the Third Avenue Block Association on our block. You were the Bronx? Mount Vernon. Oh, Mount Vernon, okay. Matter of fact, Denzel Washington's mother had a beauty salon on 4th Avenue, mm. the next block over. Her beauty salon got burglarized. Police kind of swept it under the rug. She heard about my father and all he was doing in the community. Right. And see, once again, I'm looking up to him as a young boy watching him tackle things in the community, mm. helping people out on a daily basis. That was your inspiration right there. Yeah. And you know see, I mean? that was so powerful for me to see when I was in third grade, my father, my, I told my mother, I said, I want to, I want to dress like daddy. Mm. And that's how I started wearing three-piece suits on a regular day in school. Right, right, right. And the right. teacher's like, yo, this, now this is a fine young gentleman. Yeah. And the girls yo, when I it. saw you, I was like, damn, son, you sharper than a motherfucking knife. Like, word up. <laughs> and it works. Like, people see you dressed real sharp and nice, and they know that you dress for success. Yes. You know what I'm and, saying? And I dress because I want to set an example for the young brothers of what, professionalism is in physical realm. Right. And the, the Shout out Bedroom Goodies on the live. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, the, oh, that's the outfit. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, that, that's up. my girlfriend, y'all. Yeah. And it's yeah. small world. You, know, yo. you guys went to that school together. Yo, that's crazy because me, me, me and his lady went to high school together, Transit Tech. <laughs> You know what I'm right. saying? You know what I mean? I graduated from Transit Tech. Throughout them, th throughout Transit Tech, when I first went in as a freshman, I wound up catching a case. And they kicked, not kicked me out, but when I went to go to jail yeah. uh, in the summer of 90, 90 into, you know what I'm saying? I was kicked out of the school. And my mom's was like, look, you could go get your GED. And I was like, nah, I want to experience high school. I'm, I'm, I'm staying. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, I, was, I had a full weekend. Sorry, pardon me for y'all for yawning. But um, I wanted to stay in school. And it was a teacher named Mr. Napolitano. You know what I'm saying? I guess I, I don't know what. Wow, yeah, it's Napolitano, Italian, right? yeah. <laughs> And he used to punch us in the arm. Like he was a stern teacher yeah. and it was a machine shop. So we would make like metal uh, tools, like screwdrivers and everything. We would cut the metal on the machine. You know what I mean? Cause it's a vocational school. So yeah, it's teaching yeah. us trades only. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Ironically, I've been working for transit for mad years. I, I don't really be telling people that, but I'm, we speak it on it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I achieved a goal in life. I wanted to work for transit. I went to high school for transit. I went to jail, was almost kicked out and I still stayed, graduated within four years, because when I was on Rikers Island, they made me go to the school that's in there, and those um, credits counted for when I got back out and got in school. Me and my moms went through the whole board of edu education thing to get me to stay in the school, and I did. I graduated, and 16 years after that, I was called for transit. After I graduated from high school, 16 years later, I was called for the job right when I needed it, and I've been there ever since. You know what I'm saying? So. 
I, I'm achieving a goal in life because that's one of the things that I wanted to do. So what I'm saying to you kids out there, whatever y'all inspire to do positively, you can do it. And me having sons, this is why I make sure that I'm in their lives. So they can, because I'm inspiring them just for me being there and letting them see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing with the music and the entertainment stuff and the clothing line and stuff like that, I don't know which one of those things is going to inspire them to want to be a, a successful adult in life. But me just being there, although I didn't get, a, you know what I mean, I didn't get along with the mothers or whatever the case may be, I'm still there for them. Whether I'm providing for them financially and coming around to make sure that they're good, or I'm just there to discipline them when they do wrong. Yeah. That matters. So it's a big deal for men to be in their children's lives. It's, it's a big deal. And we're two products of that. Because I was raised just by my moms. I didn't know my father at all. Still don't. But yet, I know I wanted better for myself, and I wanted my children to know who I am. Because I know what it is to not know my father. You feel what I'm saying? So he was raised with his father, and it turned him into this wonderful activist person that's making it happen and got all of the jewels for you to, to, to excel in life. And I grew up to be this man that is a stern uh, warrior that wants to make sure that my sons don't go wrong and do the wrong thing. You feel me? Because I went through it, and I don't want them to go through it. You feel what I'm saying? So just, yo, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful life if you make it. Yeah, life is yeah. what you make it. It'll be a wonderful life. It's going to be some hard times, some struggles and trials some tribulations, but you have to apply yourself and mm -hmm. men be there for your children. So when Barack Obama was talking to the black men and trying to tell them to just vote for Kamala, what he should have been saying is be there for your families. Mm -hmm. Teach them how to be uh, good stand up guys with integrity. You know what I mean? Those are more, what would be more important things to say than telling black men just to vote for Kamala. When she said out her own mouth, how she ain't doing nothing specifically for black people. Yeah. You feel yeah, me? Like, that's kind of that. weird to me. You and, know? And, you know, once again, like I said, I'm not trying to tell anybody who to vote for. Everybody has the right to choose, which is another reason why Obama shouldn't have said what he said. You know, but, you know, we're looking at, there's a lot of people that are tired of voting for a party that is not uh, that has not had a history or intention on doing anything for black people, and like we got to have these conversations. We can't just we can't just blindly, you know, say okay, this is what we're gonna do, or give away that that voting demographic. It has to make sense. Everybody else is getting a guarantee. Yes. That's, is is getting resources that. and is benefiting everyone else except for so, us. Yeah, but it's like when we speak about us. Doing things for ourselves, for our people. Oh, we're we're being set. We're, we're 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 preaching segregation and this and that. But yet, back in the days, y'all didn't want us to even use the bathroom or drink from the same water fountain as y'all. Exactly. Like y'all didn't want anything to do with us mm -mm -mm. as black people. You didn't want us to do anything with you. We couldn't go and eat in your diners. Y'all won't serve the niggers. Y'all ain't doing this. Y'all ain't doing that. But for us to stick together as a people and make shit happen and flourish. Now here the government comes and want to burn shit down. Here the government comes that want to throw black people in jail for no reason. Here they sitting in the cops to fucking wrongfully put foot on necks. Here they want to flood whole towns mm -hmm. and destroy them because we're flourishing on our own. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yo, look, right now, there's private prisons that are suing states across the United States. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, right, New York State is one of those states that's being sued. The privatized prison signed a contract with the state that says we're guaranteeing, the state says we're guaranteeing you at least 80% occupancy in your prison. Mm. If the occupancy level goes below 80%, you, can, you have the right to sue us. That's crazy. And guess what? When they got rid of all these low-level marijuana crimes, that immediately impacted the, the, the uh, uh, occupancy levels on all yeah, because they had to let mad people out of jail for for, yeah. for weed crimes because weed is now legal. Mm -hmm. you, it's like throwing people in in jail for cigarettes, i.e. the movie Lucy that I'm in uh, right now. Uh, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know what I mean? James C.B. Grace applied all of the police uniforms and weapons in the movie. He does yeah. that as well. You know what I mean? But just check it out. I'm in Lucy the movie that's coming out soon. Shout out to Kyron Hodges and and, and, and oh, yeah, Shay for show up. Kyron, man. show yeah. up films and all of that. Oh yeah, Sha. That's my. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. I got involved with the project oh, okay. because you know me and Kyron was talking, 
And then he said, yo, I want to I get you on the phone with my producer. Right. I get on the phone. I'm like, yo, Sean, yo, this cool. Bri-. That small world again. Yep, six, exactly. six degrees of separation. And it's always you like know. that. No, and I'll be always up here preaching six degrees of separation. <laughs> yo, I'm just saying, to be successful out here, it's all about who you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to know people. You got to be out here networking, and you got to never leave a stone unturned. You meet somebody, and y'all got something in common, or y'all could both do something with each other to make some shit happen. You, you definitely utilize that. You, do, you, do, you utilize the situation and be a good stand-up person with integrity. You know what I mean? It's all about relationships, bro. That's what it is, man. But another thing is, like you said, working together to make things happen mm-hmm. for the people, for yep. others. So, so I try to get people to understand, you and this person right here might might not see eye to eye. Mm-hmm. May even have, have beef at some time. Right. But the two of y'all can make something happen for others. Yep. And... I just hate when those two can't make can, can't get get by the issues that they had in order to make something happen for somebody else. It's weird you saying that because, <laughs> like when I was telling y'all earlier about when I was looking at the drink champs thing when they was in the Young World Harlem, Harlem World, World yeah. was saying something about Mason Cam and one of the I think it was Cardan or whatever he was saying that when Mason Cam had they fallen out and they broke up. They said that it was probably such a small thing that one conversation could have fixed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they were so tight that they could have fixed. One conversation could have fixed that. But they went maybe 15 to 20 years without speaking or nothing like that Crazy. for them to come back together and settle their differences. And now, look, they got one of the biggest fucking platforms out right now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. The yeah. biggest platform. And everybody and, and loves it. You also got to understand there was probably people that benefited from those two. Yep. Just like with Tupac and Biggie. Yeah. They was on stage together. A lot. Performing. And then there was people who benefited from them being separated. They saying that it was, was Puff was one of the people that was oh, happy yeah, that yeah. they wasn't cool. Puff was one of like them. That. Jimmy Henchman. There was, mm-hmm. was a couple of them in that equation. Well, we got we got about 10 minutes left of the show. Oh, I didn't man. believe we was talking that long <laughs> about stuff. But um, um, No, no, look. I, I normally, every, every platform I've ever been on, I usually come back as a reoccurring guest. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> That's what it is. So this we... is the first one. And whenever I come back, I have updates. Right. And more resources and information. And we all about the resources. We all yeah, about yeah. giving our people's resources. Yeah. And, you know, any, everybody watch our show. It's not just black people that watch our show. Everybody mm-hmm. watch our show, whether they just spying or they trying to find some shit out or they just want to see what I say so for them to say some negative shit about me or see some, say, or feel some way about me. We, I always want to give some insight, some knowledge, and some resources. So when I got guys up here like James C.B. Gray and he's giving y'all direct resources that we spoke about, utilize that shit, man. Oh, yeah. Utilize it for real, man, because there's opportunities out here for everybody. I'm doing what I love. I'm doing podcasting, video production. Uh, <clears throat> I'm in a movie. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm producing television. I'm doing what I love. I got a, a stable situation. You know what I'm saying? As far as my employment is concerned and stuff like that. As a grown man, I feel like I, I'm succeeding yeah, in life. No, no, you, you actually you actually beat the odds. Yes, yes. You and said that right. statistics that show that, 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 that said black man can't make it without indulging in a criminal lifestyle. Correct. So, and I indulged. But I was yeah. smart enough to not let it take you. You didn't get consumed to where you right. fell through the cracks. Yeah, exactly. It you had to do. It had to do an asshole full of time. Yeah. You heard? You know, you you beat the eye, and, and that then that shows that it can't happen, especially if you surround yourself with people that are like minded and that are of of, of of successful. And I always tell people, like my, my grandmother used to always tell me, you "Show me who your friends are, I'll tell you who you are." Right. You might not be like that, but eventually, that it, influence, it will, be influence. Will, will overwhelm yeah. you and, and overcome you. And point. I think that's with me. I was just so headstrong and so determined yeah. that a lot of the fucking slime balls that I was around that I grew <laughs> up with, like they couldn't influence me to do nothing. Yeah. Like I did some things because I felt I wanted to do it. Yeah. When I caught my first case, I was out there trying to be a stick up kid and robbing because oh, I wanted man. money. Yeah. Even yeah. though I knew I still was able to go get a job and everything like that. I had the heart to go out there and do that. Mm. But when I got when I faced the repercussions of that, I knew that that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to go to jail for five and 10, 15 years like a lot of my friends yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So I knew, I was like, you know what? I'm not good with that. So I was able to escape having to get a lot of time by me always staying in school mm-hmm. and always having a job so that the parole or probation officers that I had, they never really had to monitor me. They yeah, would only yeah. give me like a questionnaire. Mm-hmm. 
to write. So if you, even though I was still on the street carrying my weapon or whatever like that, when I went to the pre PO office, they never searched me because they in their mind, oh, he's a productive young man. He we don't need to worry about him. Yeah. Not knowing that I'm still the motherfucking head <laughs> ringleader of shit. But I, I knew how to carry myself as a gentleman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that masked whatever it is that I was into. And that's what I want for my sons. I want me to show them that I overcame the odds and I'm here for them. So when I seen that my son tried to trick me with some fake ass report card and then I found out <laughs> yeah, later that it was a real the, the real shit was was not impressive at all. Yeah. I went out there to not only take my reward back from him, but I just wanted to speak to him and let him know that I love you and I'm here for you. What is it that I need to do to help you succeed and excel? Because you only you, you 16 already. Mm -hmm. You only got a year and a half yeah, more yeah. year to the way you now considered as a man and you out there in the world and these are when your real responsibilities is going to happen mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be obligated to pay your mom's money for you or give it to you anymore I could be here to help you and all of that but you're not going to receive that financial backing from me as much as you was getting throughout your young life yeah. so I want to help him to understand like yo it's serious and you got to really hunker down and make it happen and come up with, and, and even if I gotta help you with something, even if I gotta bring you in and, and, and help you with the clothing line or show you how to work the camera or anything that you can prosper off of and even having you on the show and you telling me about these different opportunities that they can do AI things with and, and, and different things of that sort. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like teaching them a trade. I want the best for my children, man, because I know it's, it's, it's an extra wall up for us young black men out here. Oh man, let me tell you. Not only extra wall, you already got two strikes in as a black boy. Right. So phasing over into manhood, because I'm writing a book right now called Becoming a Classic Man. Okay. And I'm a classic <laughs> man. <laughs> well, that, that's that's one of my hashtags, you know, not just because of the way I dress, but also the way I carry myself. Right. And my intention and my character. Right. So the classic man is an honorable mention, but there is an obligation that comes along with it. Right. So just throwing on a suit. As a as as a person with bad character is what I call a fraud. Right. All right. And, and you would be right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, and before you put on that suit, you should have the core value system structure, mm -hmm. integrity, respect, honor, dignity, all of these characteristics that symbolize who you are as a man. You see what I'm saying? So now we go back to the rites of passage. Back in the days, you had to go out and kill a a, a lion. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to phase over from boyhood to manhood right. in a village of Africa. Yep. You know what I'm saying? In other places, you might have to kill a deer to bring it back home to feed the, the mm -hmm. village. But there was a ritual form of rites of passage which for you to properly phase over from boyhood to manhood. So now in our society today, you, you, we have an unlawful prospect of phasing over from boyhood to manhood in a sense where you go to jail or you get shot mm. and survive th those two things, now you have a false presentation of phasing over. Right. So now I'm gonna give you a, a, a perfect example. There was a kid that went to college and another kid from that same block that went to Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. The kid that went to college came home on summer, uh, on spring break. Right. He was robbed and killed on that same block he, he grew up on. Mm. The kid that came home from Rikers got a block party. He got money to, <laughs> to, to buy drugs. He got a whole package. It's crazy that when somebody come home from jail, they're yeah. celebrated so, so, so much. He was praised. Now, the thing is this. The other kids are looking at both equations. They hold on. This guy got killed and robbed from coming home from college. And this other guy got rewarded mm -hmm. for doing a little piece, a little stint in jail. Yep. So they're looking at the rewards process here, and deciding on which prospect they want to decide. Exactly. And this you is the exact saying? reason why I went back to my son and I took back the money I gave him. Yeah. Like you're not, I'm not rewarding failure. Yeah, you said that. If yeah, you think yeah, you're yeah. gonna keep this money. Because he said to me after we spoke and everything and I hugged him up, I made him come over. I was like, give me a hug because I love you and I don't want to see you doing wrong and nothing like that. Yeah. But I'm not rewarding failure. When he walked off, he said, Dad, man, can I get my, can I get my bread back? I said, no. absolutely not. Yeah. Because absolutely, he not. has to understand, once again, there's no reward for that. And number two, he got to make it right and also develop a conscious 
a level of understanding when it comes to somebody who loves you and wants to, your your parents want you to see want to see you do better than anybody else you Correct. meet in your life. You're going to meet some cool friends and all that stuff, yep. but your parents, specifically your father, and when it comes to a son, yeah, because no other man is going to want to see you win more than your father. Exactly. I don't care what nobody says, even if he wasn't in your life. A lot of times when they come around and later in your life, they have such a level of guilt and 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 and, and love at the same time that right. they say, "Man, I want to help you for what I couldn't do before now, right. even more." You know, so that right there, and it's crazy because in your teenage years, you it's like you it's like you you got a domestic terrorist living in your house, right? Like somebody who's totally against everything that you do, and but this is a hormonal uh, phase that right. they go through. But it's and we all go so, through it. But guess what? At the end of the day, it because right now, I never thought that I would tell my mother, "Thank you for whipping my ass when I was born." <laughs> I never, yeah. when I was young, I could never imagine. But guess what? I said that already. Yes, and I really meant it. Right. Because I look back at all of the children that didn't get that ass whooping. Yep. And, and, and a lot of them are in jail. A lot of them are dead. dead. Correct. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So I'm glad now that I got it because at the time when I was getting it, <laughs> you it know. was like, why the fuck? You yeah. know, why she want to beat me for? You know what I mean? You know, but it works. It, it works. It and works. And you'll always see things in hindsight. Hindsight. As you get older, you'll remember what happened to you when you was younger and it'll make you a better person. Yeah. And that's just what it is. But look, James, <laughs> I ain't going to front. We, we, we just chatted it up. We, like my son would be like, yo, dad, you chat. You chat. Yeah, we chatted up. And we chatted up about you, too. Because I'm sure you be yeah, yeah, sneak yeah. watching me on, on, on your, 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 your phone or whatever. The father but, loves you, brother. Yes. He to, loves you. To Tough death. love is the best love. To death. And, <laughs> I, and, I, and I specifically didn't put hands on you that day because I wanted to talk to you because I know you're a young man. And you go, you go through all of that stuff. And you expected that from me. But I gave you your warning. And I told you. And I'm going to be on you and watching you about how you excel in school. And I'll be up at that school being real cool with your teachers mm -hmm. and letting them see that I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? And anything goes wrong in there, they could call me. You know what I mean? Love you, son, for real. You know what I mean? Both of y'all, man. But um, just tell everybody where they can find you at. You know what I'm saying? And we, can, yeah, we um, I want to have you up here again, like you said, yeah, recurring guest. All platforms, just, a matter of fact, you can just go on Google and type in James, J-A-M-E-S, mm -hmm. C, letter C, letter B, like Chris Brown, mm -hmm. C, B, Gray, G-R-A-Y. That right there will pull up everything. Or you could go straight to Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, I just launched uh, my uh, my TikTok page. Okay. Is it, is it TikTok? Tick, um, you just got a TikTok page? Oh, no, it's not TikTok. Uh, what's the other one? Um, LinkedIn, Linktree? No, oh, yeah, but link, LinkedIn is um, it's James C, B, Gray, too. Okay. And you can see my whole resume and everything. Yeah, it, it is TikTok. I just launched because okay. everybody's like, yo, man, you got to. You know what they said? They said, listen, the stuff you do in real life, people are lying about on TikTok. Mm. So when I went on, I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, this is cool because right. this is stuff I really do, you know. Right. So I just got on TikTok. I don't have a lot of videos, but I got to think about like eight or nine. Mm -hmm. But I'm putting Well, you're going to start? It starts you know? somewhere. But on other, all the other platforms, you'll see my Black History Facts, my 365-day Black History Campaign. All right, I'm also the vice president of the Harlem Historical Society, too. Mm -hmm. We do a lot involving uh, black history, black history facts, black history culture and information. But also, um, we do a lot of street namings. We did uh, James Brown Way, mm -hmm. uh, 126th Street between uh, Frederick Douglass and Adam Clayton. We did Sylvia Woods Way on the corner of 126. That's and, right over there and, where her restaurant is, right? Yeah, right Lennox. there on the corner of Lennox and 126. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did... Uh, Oh, we're about to do, um, uh, what's her name? Um, I Rise. Uh, oh, Ma, um, I Rise. Um, Maya, Maya Angelou. Angelou. Yeah, Maya so we're about Angelou. to do hers. And thanks to uh, Dr. Aisha Sekou, who really helped petition for that to happen. You know, um, And also, of course, um, the president of the Harlem Historical Society. I want to give a special shout out to Jacob Morris, somebody who... They've built that institution over the years and yeah. still doing good things. Well, look, James, I appreciate you coming on the show. And I'm going to have you on again because yeah, yeah, I'm the... I, 
I feel like I'm like a very militant type of person when it comes to my peoples. Because when we speak the way we speak, other yeah. people be trying to say, oh, you're so militant and you're this, you're that. But, but it's yeah. okay for other nationalities to be focused on their people yeah, and yeah. doing things for their people. But when we want to speak up for our peoples and give um, um our opportunities for our peoples, then, oh, it's a problem. Or, or, or we being uh, racist or we're being yeah. anti-Semitic and all this other crap. No, we got to speak up for our peoples. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with us being cool with all these other different nationalities and everything like that but we got to speak up for our people because there's so many obstacles against us so i'm always going to speak up for us. so everything you're doing i applaud you i yeah. salute you i'm happy you're here you can always come up here if you got anything you're doing and you need to promote it then we'll do it that way now that you're on tiktok we can make a 20 shorts yeah. of little things we set up here yeah, and yeah, we yo, post it over yeah. and over again send, send me send me send me and i'll post them yes. on my joint that's but what all, we i just want to thank you brother for having this platform there's a lot of platforms that are going on that, that don't touch the black because, issue. You they, know why? Because they're <laughs> under some big corporation that dictates yeah. what they can say. Yeah. But here at S Street Media Studios, we can say what the fuck we want to say. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I, and I feel the same way. Like I said, even though I'm a part of this organization over there, I, the thing is, and I used to tell people this all the time, I don't have to talk behind nobody's back. I don't have to uh, try to disenfranchise nobody. Right. Because I speak the truth. And the truth shall set you free. So I don't have to talk bad about nobody. Right. If I say something about somebody that that, that they might not like. The truth hurts. They, they might not like the truth. The truth is always going to so hurt. it's so easy for me to speak what I have to speak because I speak the truth. And I said, you know what? As long as I'm speaking the truth, I have no fear that will set about you free. what nobody else feels about what I'm saying. Because I can I can back up everything I'm saying. Yep. Uh, statistical data, video footage, or what I'm going to be able to back up what I'm Facts. saying. So. That's why I never feared that. And if anybody has a problem with the truth, then that's on them. That's a reflection of your character or your obligation to someone whose agenda speaks against it. Right. Them. Or you're just you're just an insecure person and yeah. you're showing your insecurities. Literally. You know what I mean? So I thank I you for being here. <laughs> We're gonna see y'all next week, Sunday. Don't forget the ground hard gears out. If y'all wanna get y'all jackets, y'all sweaters, yeah. y'all hats. Yo, I wanna everything. talk to you about you know the um the the um uh, winter circle. Okay. That okay. Could, that could help you with what you're doing with the. All right. Everything that you got going on, <laughs> I want to be a part of it. We're going to yeah. make sure. Y'all going to see a lot more of me and James because also my high school friend that I went to high school with is his lady. So, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like I said, you know what I mean? Amazing it's, young lady. Yes. And she's always you know, been I, on her I grind. almost gave up on a black woman. Yeah. And this young lady really gave me a whole nother level of respect mm -hmm. and confidence. And our black woman. So yes, she's always you know, been a good person. Just want to thank her for being great and and for you know, being riding with me on this journey. That's you what's know. up. You know, thank you. We're going to see y'all next <laughs> week. It's your boy Walter Rama. Grind hard out. Right. Yeah. Peace.